Okay, we'll, we'll start again and call, call the meeting to order. Um, it's November 16th, a little bit after six in the evening. Uh, do we need have any changes to the agenda? Or additions? Uh, not for me. Good. Okay, do we have, is Scott with us? I am. Hey, 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 Scott. How are you? Good yourself. Oh, hanging in there. So, you probably you probably have an ambulance service budget for us. We do. I don't know if um, what Ron has shared with you. We are asking for roughly a three percent increase this year, which means for Hyde Park you would go from one hundred seventeen thousand. Okay. $117 to $120,040, or an increase of $2,623. Um, 2020, to say the least, has been a difficult year. Um, yeah. We did have a couple of positive things happen this year. Um, we did open a new location in Morgan. We just um, received November 1st, put a new ambulance into service at the Johnson Station. So which which we're really trying to keep on our regular replacement schedule. It's important. Um, it will save long term cost. Um, but we found we're pretty much shut down for services for two months in March and April. Uh, so we have a drastic decrease in in um, both transfers and nine one one calls. Uh, on top of an increase in cost of supplies and the amount of personal protection gear that we have to use this year and keep replacing. So as of October 22nd, our operating budget showing a loss of $104,906, which, and so why are we only asking for 3%? Well, we did do COVID testing, which has given us an extra, and this is out of Johnson, $41,679. We applied for a PPP loan, uh, received $139,164, which we just found out is officially now a grant, oh, and, which makes a huge difference. We have received one COVID relief payment from the state of $26,449. And we have just heard, but not received, a about a second COVID relief payment from the state of $19,500. So those total from COVID through grants and the testing we're doing, $226,000, which right now leads us to the positive of 21,886, but we know from October 22nd through the end of the year, we're going to be losing some additional funds, especially as we're expecting a, another shutdown at any point. Yeah. Uh, getting prepared for the worst. And we're hoping to use that extra money to get through the 2021 year without um, a great tax <clears throat> increase to the property owners of the five towns um, and any if we're lucky and have extra money at the year 2021 the board of directors would decide how to do it as far as getting ahead in our um, capital funding for um, building maintenance ambulances etc so oh and the other thing is we also received twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars in hazard pay for our employees. this is in job for Johnson uh, of course, that money that was for employees that make under $25 an hour, which 100% goes to the employees. Um, but it did cost us a, an additional 6 to 7% on top for workman's comp, Social Security, <laughs> Medicare, 401k, etc. So, Hello? Yeah, you there? 
Yeah, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. You, said you, you, you think and you vanished. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I think we're going to we're going to be fine this year. Um, okay. We believe that extra funding will carry through next year and cover us for any um, shutdowns. And then, if the, by chance there is some money left from those COVID payments, we can determine whether what we do is whether we put it into the capital funds for building maintenance for purchasing ambulances to um, decrease additional costs to the taxpayers in further years. Any okay. questions? I don't think so. You know, with <laughs> with all the sorts of emergency services, it's and again, where where we're going right now, who knows? I'm glad there was um, that money got turned into a grant, and yeah, that hopefully, is hopefully before this is over, there will be more money. You know, the federal government will will ship out more monies to states to help with these sorts of things. Yes, we're hoping, um, but again, we think we're in pretty good shape, um, depending if, as long as another shutdown doesn't last more than two to three months. Yeah, right. So, I, was go I was going for maybe a month. How's that? Yeah, well, I think we're all ready for our lives to change back to somewhat normal, um, but we're doing the best we can, and the crews are doing a great job. I know they're still facing it every day. <clears throat> we had to transfer a COVID patient to Dartmouth today. So they are still in some difficult situations, but they are doing a great job for us. They are. If you if you will pass along our sincere thank you to them for, for, um, for being willing to do this work and take those kinds of risks. It's, um, again, you just, you don't, you don't think about it, but it's so important to have folks being willing to do that sort of thing. Yes, yes, I will definitely pass that on. Thank you. Um, any other board members have any questions for Scott? No, it's Dave piping in. I have no questions. Dave, we were sure you were hunting. <laughs> no, no, just barely made it home. So. Okay, I guess um, I guess that's all we need, Scott. We'll um, let you off the hook, and if we have any questions, we know where you are. We'll get in touch with you. It sounds like uh, you guys have you you've been doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please get hold of me, and I'll hold on. I think I'm on the schedule a little bit later. <laughs> um, Very good. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> Little checks here. Um, next, we're on the municipal budget work schedule and updates. And I see all these library people here. Thank you, library people. <laughs> Thank you for, you know, and I don't, I don't think people can say it often enough. Thank you to the, to Amy and crew and all of you for the incredible resource that the library has been and continues to be through this, um, through this very strange time period. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a, it's a more important than ever resource for the community. So you want to spend some money this year? You got them there, Ron? Who's going to be presenting, Jim? Have to unmute Jim if you're going to speak. Okay, sorry. There you yeah. go. Okay. Okay, now. <laughs> Man, okay, okay, good. Got um. I'll, I can speak for a minute, and then Sai can say whatever he would like to say. Um, I, I can't really say much more than what Susan just said about how valuable the library is, what a great job Amy's done keeping the library functioning during this very difficult time. Um, talking directly about our, our budget, 
our original intent was to level fund everything except for a small increase in salary, which would have kept our original intent to request a little over 2%. But then two weeks ago, we were blindsided by the village water. And that increased our request by about $3,000, which we had not intended at all or expected at all. So with that $3,000 added to our request, that brings our total budget proposal up to about 5.5%. And so the only change is from that, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, does that have the sewer bill in there as well? Yes, it does. Okay. Hey, so. Yeah. I got a question. I, I, I just printed off their budget here, and I can see where they added 3,600 for the uh, unexpected water. Uh, I, I just heard that the, the budget went up to 5.5% uh, on the paper. It says 4, four 3 yeah, I don't I don't have the sewer part in there, Dave, yet. So that's that's uh missing from the printout you got. But the sewer's missing? Yeah, it just has the water 31 or 3200. So go with the five percent for now, and then we'll update it for the sewer. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, I guess I won't pull that up. I'm having a technological issue with my desktop <laughs> that has all the stuff on it, so I won't look at it, okay? <laughs> um, I don't know if Jim was done with his presentation. Yeah, I yeah don't know. pretty much everything else was level funded and all we really wanted was a little increase in the salaries until the water and sewage tumbled on us. I don't know if there's anything else to really say or not about it. It's exactly the same as last year. otherwise. I know we're keeping the um, 12,000 on um, contribution side as well for the, that's the revenue side. Right. This is just the expense side, but the 12,000 yes. revenue side. Right. I, I think um, we'll be, we'll be talking about the village bond in a little bit. And um, I'm sure that affects your other budgets as well. Well, yeah, no joke. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and of course, we're all going to get, you know, because it goes through the county, so it's going to come through the county, but then we're all going to get it through the school as well. Oh. oh. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <sighs> yes. And, and I'm wondering if maybe we should, um, like, take all those expenses and, and sort of keep a little separate line item for them, Ron, so that here's what it is to each organization. Um, and, and because I and also because I think it will be helpful for voters to see that, uh, you know, again, they were trying to stay at around 2%. Everybody's trying to stay around 2%, and then you get hit with a gigantic water sewer bill um, for folks to see that that our our structures within town are trying very hard to live within a two percent increase and here's why things are going up so um we'll we'll be talking about that but again appreciate sort of in some ways i see your those budgets is two budgets is the budget that that everybody had planned on and then there's this unexpected addition that no one was told about prepared for or had any idea coming Hmm. Um, anybody have any questions for the library? Good job holding your budget, guys. Thank you. We certainly appreciate all the support the town gives us all the time. 
we uh which is funny one of the things i'd noticed in the in the nice weather because of course as you know with the with your wi-fi and people using it not being able to go in but now besides the benches at the library you apparently you reach across to the pocket park as well and so finding folks sitting over there in the pocket park using their using the ability to tap into the to the library's system so it's like okay right might as well have people be comfortable right it was a little noisy this summer but hopefully it'll be better next year we anticipated that so we expanded our technology resources so we could reach more people that weren't able to enter the library yeah yeah no that was and again that's and i and i know you've gotten the uh i uh, you've gotten at least some partial funding for the changes you want to make downstairs right so well, I just keep plugging away. <laughs> well, thank you okay. so much. Appreciate your time. Always thank a you, pleasure. Jim. Thank you, guys. Let's see. And now I bet we have a fire department. Who's up Ed for the Webster. fire department? Whoop. Ed, Ed Webster's here. Hi. Hi, Ed. See what happens. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that. What did I do? Oh, my God. This is the fire department. <laughs> Brad is here and Ed is here. They're not muted, so they can talk anytime. There's Liz. Hi, sorry I'm late. Oh, nope, nope, you're not late. Okay, where's, hey Ed, where are you? Has he unmuted himself? Oh yeah, he's good, he's good on our end. I don't know what. Well, Everybody's wide open for free talk. If well, let's see, I got this. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I'm looking at this budget here. And I think Ed and the guys over there did a hell of a good job again until we get the water. Now, yeah. too, I don't, I don't know how this lawsuit and stuff's going to go or how long it's going to take. But for twenty thousand one hundred dollars a year, we could punch a well for under ten. Right. So, so to best of your knowledge, your own knowledge, how long is this? going to be up in the air before it's settled on who's going to pay what and how much oh, it's going to it'll be there for a long time dave i got no doubt about it and, okay, and so. one of the we i i it's now further on the agenda but talking about it we need to take a formal action and then once we do that i think uh, one of the things that we that we uh, get the first legal advice about is do we do we pay the bills under protest or do you not pay the bills or what do you do? And, and I think that might, and again, I would say, I think the question should be, I, I would put the library, the fire department, every, everybody, you know, um, under, under that umbrella so that we're all doing the same thing and we know, you know, and we know what to do. Um, and then come up with a plan as to as to how we want to do it. If we have to, if we have to pay out all that money, and and again, I mean, if the library, if the fire department budget has got to go X, X percent because it's just, um, you know, that it's all going to be taxpayer dollars. Do we sort of put that, or pool that in one place, and say, here's what the what the town is paying, and pay it as one lump sum if we have to pay it under protest and figure out how to do that. Again, I think we'll need some, we'll need first of all, some legal advice on that. And then we'll need some, uh, we'll come up with a practical plan and let everybody know how to, how to, how to deal with it. Yeah, well, and, I, I got to answer that too, but that come later. But my uh, question here is, should, I think we should back at 20,100 out and show the fire department on yeah. having a minute increase and have that separate because if that is going to be the way it's going to be and we punch a well for eight thousand dollars that'd be a twelve thousand dollar uh uh, uh okay, don't get no. i don't want to say no. 
You know what I'm saying? Is that so that really Ron? Hi, Ed. Yeah, I got some technical problems with my speaker on my computer. Ah, you got oh, you. Okay. Up. I'm okay, hang, hang on just hang on just a second, Ed, because we got you. Dave, I think that's it's exactly the same thing as I'm saying for the library, you know, that you're right. I think we just need to show because these folks have worked hard to do a you know, to to do as close to level funding as these days as you can do with a budget without making serious reductions and show the whole water issue as a as a separate item that is here's what the fire department is, here's what the library is, here's what the town garage is. You know, um, so that so that folks um, see it. Yes, understand. Okay. So, yeah, because I, I I agree. Looking at I I mean everybody the 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 North Hyde Park Department and our department, the library, everybody has worked really hard to do a, a you know a two percent a two plus percent increase this year, um, and 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 with a lot of strange additional costs for people this year too. Uh, so, so, um, yeah, so Ed, now we got you. You got your microphone, you set? Yeah. Okay. I hope so. Can you, you hear me? Yeah. I want you to know, we've already said you did a good job, so you might not want to say much. <laughs> okay. As long as you're all set, I'm set. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, basically, uh, this is pretty much bare bones, uh, I think it's a, like a 2.1% or something like that before we add on the water and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's no no big changes in it. We cut a couple places to add to a couple other places, as you can see. If you if you look down the sheet, that I think Ron probably faxed or emailed to all of you. Um, you can see what our current 21 budget is and what our proposed 22 budget is. And it's a difference of one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars increase, not counting the water issue. Yeah. We lost your head. I'm still here. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Uh, unless you got that's you know that's about all I've got to say about it. If you got any questions? I'll try to answer them. Dave, got anything to add? No, oh, no. I mean, uh, it, they've controlled everything they got to control. What they what's gone up? This stuff is out of their control. So, good job, Ed. Thank you. Okay, Brian or Rolly or Roger? No, I don't have nothing. No, um, when you get, when you get done with this uh, article, I have a fellow here who wants to join in here. Roger's talking. Yeah, go ahead, Roger. Um, I have a fellow here who wants to talk about his roads. I don't know where you want him. When you want him to come on down when we get to the highway department? Oh, okay, that's coming up shortly. Okay, we'll get so him, we'll get him in there. Yep. He's in here and he's masked. I'll have him hold until you're ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. For him. okay. Um, I think I think that takes care of it. We we know where you are, and if anybody has any questions, but it looks good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, for the highway department. Ron, what, what order do you wanna do you wanna do this? Take care of some of yeah, the little I I think Beam Road is good just where it is because uh it's it's we need to follow up on the site visit report and then see what you want to do next. So it's I know it's, there's people here waiting to hear. Uh, I, mean, I, I got I got lost in there someplace trying to read this. Um, they want okay. so you want Steam Road is good. It's good. Is yeah, that good? I, 
you I want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, we need to show, uh, have some notes from your site visit, which would be yeah. good to put on the record. Okay, who 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 made it to the Bean site visit? Ro Roland and I did. Okay. We got there, we met with some of the people, and um, we discussed the uh, uh, work that would be done. I sent out a picture um, showing that there was one culvert that was uh, uh, blocked totally. Um, and, and then also we uh, uh, talked about doing some ditching along that road down through and then yeah. getting some permission um, to uh, put a culvert in across the road to catch the water and get permission for where the culvert is going to drain out. There's a catch basin there that uh, needs to be um, uh, talked about with the landowner to maybe tie into that catch basin and uh, distribute the water out uh, onto one of the property owner's land there. Uh, we need to um, have those contacts and I was supposed to do that and I haven't had a chance to yet with the uh, extensive overtime that I've had to put in at the correctional facility. Yeah, I know it. And that's that's most of what we we discussed in a nutshell there uh um i think it uh based on what we've seen there for uh, uh road and what we've done in the past and what we've got um uh already pre-established there for turnaround and stuff like that that we should extend it down through to uh um where the turnaround is currently so now does that we do we need a survey for that Yes, I believe yeah, we'll we'll need to have it surveyed. Okay. So we we could go ahead and get the survey done, and then I would assume this is work that's going to get done next year. Hopefully, in the springtime, uh, once we get reorganized with our town crew. Okay, but we can, Ron. When could we get the survey done? Oh, it, it's it's just putting the the word out. The um, what I heard, I think, what Brian was describing is potentially stormwater easements as well, which we typically need to get if they're new. Which it sounds like they're new, new idea for a new drainage, um, new, new drainage pattern on that uh, end of the road. I don't, I think there might be some survey done already, so we're not starting from scratch, but um, the turnaround hasn't been surveyed in, so we'd have to figure out what the limits of that are and then have those limits surveyed in. Um, once the survey work's all done on a preliminary, we, we present it to the neighbors and select board for comment, similar to what's happening with Prospect Street. Okay. We, we could have to identify some of that. We, we could eliminate some of that. Uh, uh, runoff going down to the bottom of that hill if we just uh, clear that one culvert that I mentioned and send a picture on. Yeah. Roland, yeah, so do you I... have anything? You were there. I think something should be done, you know, if we get the good weather this year to ditch that down around that corner and clean that culvert out and, you know, go down to the end of the turnaround and, and get that culvert cleaned out. You know, I don't know if we got time to do the whole thing ditching down through there, but it should be all ditched all the way down to that black culvert, that plug culvert, all the way down around that corner because, you know, it's not, it's washing the edge of the road out the way they ditched that, Brian. You see it. Yeah. I mean, it's right on the edge of the road the way they did it with a grader. So, I mean, it's, it needs to be pushed back with the backhoe to, to put the ditch back there so it gets away from the road. Hey, Roly. 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 <laughs> we we lose him. Roly. It's Dave. I guess I guess my question was if we disturb that land or that road or any of the uh, dirt up there, won't, won't it become muddy? If, if we ditch that, Roland's not speaking right now. I don't know if he's got it on mute, but uh, 
if we ditch it, all it will do is increase the uh, the flow and get it out of the road. It's not well, going to hurt nothing if you ditch it. If you have the time and the weather stays with us, I mean, a day up there, we'll have that all ditched. You know, a day, a few hours, will, uh, you know, you could go down through there pretty good. And you don't have to lug the material off because the guy down in the end that owns the place down at the end said that we could dump it right there and he will take care of it with his tractor he's got a place for it but you know all you got to do is go down the road 200 yards 150 yards and you can dump it right there i th I, I, I thought i heard you say about pushing pushing some dirt back off the road no 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 well what happened is when they went up there they they ditched a little bit of it down that hill but they used the grader and they put it right on the edge of the road dave and when it rained like it was raining, it was washing the edge of the road out because the ditch needs to be put back where the ditch is, not on the edge of the road. Okay. That's yep. what I see. And I know, Brian, you were there too. Yes, I agree. But, you know, the thing with the culvert down at the end, uh, down at the corner, you're not going to be able to do that this year. That's going to have to be thought of and the person that owns the land where the culvert would dump the water onto, she was fine with it. We talked to her that day. But Brian, you know, as he said, there's a there's a, a DI there, and could we hook into that DI and then make it a lot easier? But I don't know that because we got to talk to the landowner about that. That wasn't the woman that we talked to's land. So that was something. And and if you remember, Brian. Deanna Junkins was the one you were going to talk to. Yes. Yeah. She helps that lady down there. She, she works for the lady. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But you know, if you can give them people, a, you know, a days worth of ditching up there and dump it down there, I mean, you you might take care of a lot of problems for the in the spring if we get the time. Scott still on? Yeah. Scott. Excuse me, I could not hear that. Are you still on, Scott? Yeah, he's there. Yes. Okay, what do you think? That should be the culvert should be cleaned out, and then we should be able to ditch it if we get the time, and then next year we'll look about putting that water across the intersection in the corner down there. Yeah, we'd be very happy to have the ditching done this fall. Um, we didn't expect more than that because of the time constraints, but we're right, just right. worried about um, more problems in the spring if it wasn't ditched this fall. Well, I mean, it should be done, and I agree with that. But, you know, if this weather holds off, I think, you know, I don't know what the boys are doing now, but. I don't know if Ron could schedule that in there or not. Well, they're doing they're doing the separator right now. They need to get that done. Yeah. And, and we're going to be for the. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're going to be a little short staffed here, and Mark's on vacation this this week, right? Yeah. Well, I think. Uh, and that thing that I think we got some money in the budget. Where we could we could hire an excavator up there for a day, couldn't we? Or am I wrong on that, Ron? <laughs> right now we're waiting for grant money to come back in, so it's going to be that revolving door question of when the reimbursements come, because a lot of money went out the door, so to speak, from okay. the air work. But we can, I think, what we can do is we'll add it as a uh, you know a fall slash early winter project and just make 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 the best effort to get there. Yeah. The if the board is committed to that extension of the class three to the new turnaround, um, I don't I don't think Scott's concern is is as significant. In other words, if the road washes out, but the town is taking responsibility for it, it will be fixed. So it's not it's not like the um, the other situation where the town was. Uh, basically maintaining a private road if the board wants to switch gears and go to making it a public road then we act like it's a public road so that the plow trucks go down there the, the road will get wider the proper ditches are put in there 
and the public can go and access the turnaround to turn around if they want to. The private road signs would come off. And if the road fails or if there's problems, then the town crew goes out there. There's no, there's no question about whether it's a public road or is going to be a public road. So I think the private sign sign is gone now. I think. No, I, I know. I'm just. I was going down the list of the change of what would happen. That's all. So if if the public takes an interest in that road, which is the select board, you know, taking responsibility to the turnaround then we have to go through all the hoops to make it happen. But in the interim, if there's a road problem, the crew will treat it like a public road. So if I don't, don't think this can I think jump in here? Yeah, go ahead. This is Jerry Smith. I live on the road there. Um, my, my concern at this point is if you ditch down that hill, which I think is a great thing to do, and you stop at that corner what's that going to do to sherry's property as that water runs down there through that ditch and there's no ditch going around the corner is that the every action has a is reaction going to run across the house? <laughs> i understand, I understand. well the, the, that's why i said it should be all, all ditched all the way down to your where the turnaround is okay okay no, no I, that's I, where the next I, that's where the next culvert. That. That's where the next culvert is. Is down by your place, sir. Down by the turnaround. That's correct. Yes. You know? Yes. And and, and Ron, the discussion Ron, we had when you Ron, were here. For... Wait, Rolly, go ahead. The other discussion well, we had whether to move that turnaround or not. Are you still thinking that? We haven't discussed that. We haven't talked about that yet. But that's a that's a possibility. Okay. It's, we got to run it through the loop for the, you know, the to see where it really ends and all this. We got to get somebody up there to survey it or whatever we got to do to do figure it out. Sounds good. So what we're going to try to do at this point is hopefully get a ditch this fall and then proceed from there as far as survey and and all that sort of good stuff. And and exactly. you still want the material, right? Sure. You know we can dump it right there. That that yep. saves a lot of trucking. Yep. Nope. Be happy to take care of it. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Brian. Yes. You got anything else to say? No, I think we covered it all. As long as those culverts get cleared out, I think it should handle the runoff. And if it's graded properly, then uh, uh, it should control the volume of uh, runoff coming off the road and then off the side bank here. Often the woods should manage yourself pretty well. Okay. Scott Grizzle, are you still on? Yes. Okay. What do you think? No, oh, anything that can be done. I know it's all um, weather related, what you can do, um, but I'm just happy that um, you're willing to proceed because um, before I lived in Hyde Park back in the 1980s at some point, the town asked the landowners to put the turnaround where it was so they could, um, it would make it easier for the town trucks to get up the hill from where the mailboxes are presently when they're pushing snow. But that turnaround is kind of in a weird place anyway with his building being right there. I think if we could come up and get, you know, permission to, to build another turnaround, I think it would help him. Yes. Yep. And then we would pick up the, that extra would be our responsibility of um, grading, plowing, um, ditching. Yeah, we could, you know, we'll, we'll figure that one out next, next spring or over the winter. We'll figure that one out yeah. but we you know that that turnaround's tight for the town boys and it it's kind of a nuisance for him plowing all that snow against his building right no, i agree so, I'd, I'd be perfectly happy to move that back if that can be done and everyone agrees as far as property owners is that your land or is that the next door neighbors or the woman's up the road uh, it's actually the people down the hill. There's, they own a, a little strip oh. that goes across there. That's right. So we'd have to contact them, and we'd have to get a right. 
permission and get right. it all heated over or whatever it would take. So that's going right. to take a while. Sure. I understand. So it sort of sounds like a good winter project to sort of come up with the plan. Hopefully the weather will hold and we can get some basic work done up there this fall and then take the winter to come up with the plan and what we want to do and get any surveying done that needs to be done. So in the spring, we can be <laughs> famous last words in the spring. We can be all ready to do the project. There you go. That sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, now, Roger, you did Roger. Just, that? Yeah, he had somebody. Right? Yeah, that's right. I was going to say he has somebody who has a road issue and wants to talk to us. Let's do that before we go to the net zero. John, yeah, John Hoadley's here and he'd like to talk to you folks about his road. Go ahead, John. Yeah, uh, Susan, you come up there and look down and remember. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Uh, and of course, Brian lives right beside me. Uh, so he knows. See, <clears throat> that road is set over. Well, you see what they did to the road there. And uh, but uh, uh, Mark sent that boy, uh, one of his men up, and on the right hand side, where you, you know, where we pulled in my driveway, he cleaned that out, he didn't clean the rest of it, and they're driving right over where that gravel is now and crushing it right in. Uh, I had to hire a seller last summer. To, I couldn't rake it. I hired the neighbor's boy, gave him $100, and of course, he couldn't get the part. They pushed it way back here. So I hired a guy come and break it out for me. And what I'd like to do, if I could get Mark there someday, and we are talked it over about a solution I you know uh when my neighbor says you know pretty soon it's going to be right up to my 911 <laughs> number on my house and it is it's, it they set that road over wicked when they built it up they set it over you know two three feet there and every year they set it over more and i don't know if brian can hear me but he can hear uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can. I, I can. I can hear you, John. And uh, I, again, like uh, we've had this discussion in the in the past, and I think a lot of it was stemmed from the. There's some trees starting to grow along the very edge of the the road, and I think that well, was yeah. one of the reasons, not the sole reason, but it was one of the reasons that uh, the road kind of got shifted over towards your house, as you can. Anybody with a, a stitch of uh, logic can see that the road was uh, over to the right uh, or over right. away from your house prior. Uh, I I was in hopes. Uh, uh, Mark come up the other morning at six o'clock, right on the button, and I was waiting there, but he didn't stay there long enough for me to get out and talk with him. He's an awful good boy, and. Uh, you know, I'm sure me and Mark have come to some conclusion what to do. I don't know what to do. I can't afford to keep hiring somebody to fix that every year. And I don't know what to do. That's all. And, uh, but uh, the town manager, I called him once and he said he'd have Mark bring me up some gravel where they built it up so high and well Brian put the roof on for me and he can tell he had to shovel to get in my driveway and I left a great big dip there and I filled it in with my top soil I had on my garden but I ain't got no more good soil to fill that and I don't know what to do and uh, I think me and Mark could probably come to, you know, uh, uh, like I told you, Susan, that road probably shouldn't have been plowed, but if, if Mark hadn't plowed it, then 
you know, people have been up in the air wide and found my road. <laughs> that's, but, that's right. Uh, that first storm is hard. Nothing's, nothing's set up or anything. Uh, John, how about what we'll do? Because Mark's on vacation this week, and when he gets back, we'll have a have a chat and see about um, and and maybe Mark and and Brian will see if, if they ever let you have a day when they don't put you to work, Brian. Um, they're just going to keep you locked over in St. Johnsbury pretty soon, I'm afraid. Um, and and we can come up and see what we can see what we can do for a plan to to, to figure that out for you. Yeah, and. Uh... You know, I, I, I know those town boys have it a lot rougher than most people think. I, I know what they're going through. I've been there, but uh, I think we could work out something. I, I don't know just what, but I'm easy to please. But at my age, I'm not very good. <laughs> uh, you know, back when I was a young caller, I could go on and I could clean that out myself, but I'm. Some people think I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> never, John. Never. We'll, um, John. I'll, we'll, uh, we'll chat with Mark when he, uh, when he's, uh, when he's back from vacation. Hopefully, having gotten his deer, and um, and uh, we'll come up and have a look at it and see what we can come up with for a plan for you. And uh, I appreciate that. And uh, you know, I'm not mad at the boys. Don't. Oh come on. When I first see it, I get kind of peeved, but yeah, but, well, but you know, well, I, it's just you know, something has to be done because you know, it's just one in my lawn. So, yep, yeah. okay, we'll take we'll we'll put it on the list, John. Okay, and I appreciate okay. that. Very yeah, much. thanks for coming in. Yeah. Yep, I never been to one of these before. Well, there you go, <laughs> and now you got one of these where we're all trying to do it technologically, more successful than others sometimes. Yeah. Um, Ron, how about we go on to net zero? Does that make sense? That makes good sense. Yes. Okay. Is there an update on Prospect Street? No, this and is the yeah, for you, yeah, yeah. Well, you folks have a good day, evening. Okay. Okay, Thanks, John. John. And I'll yeah, come so back Pros someday and holler <laughs> Prospect Street is, uh, like we is about on the Net Zero project okay. now. So you can, Andres Terizo is here to uh, talk about it and he's going to try to share a screen. Uh, Tony's here as well to help with some of the explanations. Hold on a second. I'm going to mute Roger. Yeah. There you go. Okay, and Prospect Street is part of this net yeah. zero. So this will be your Prospect Street update. How's that? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep, I got gotcha. you. This is Andres Terizo with Watershed Consulting. How's everybody doing? Um, so I have, uh, hopefully you can see the screen here, and I'm going to zoom in. Um, and Tony, uh, my partner here, is also on the line. He's going to uh, interject some things too. Just a quick overview on this project. So this is a, a grant-funded project that I've been working with Ron on now for a while uh, through the Lake Champlain Basin Program. We're looking at um, basically trying to mitigate stormwater from the village, and you know, building off of uh, the streetscape work that was done as part of the, the feasibility study in the village. You know, we've taken some of those concepts and refined them a little bit. Um, and that's those those are shown on this plan. We've also done a lot of subsurface soils work in the village. We did borings um, and infiltration testing all over the village to really figure out what the soil conditions are so we can devise a stormwater system which is going to infiltrate a lot of the runoff from the village. That's really the ultimate goal of the project. And so as part of our contract with the, with the town, we're um, going to be producing a 30% level concept plan showing this whole green infrastructure type approach in the village. Um, and so I think the purpose of today, we, what we have on the plan, there's a lot of features on the plan. And really, I think this is the first time we're presenting it. 
and we can we can pare it down from here and we can refine it from here but really the purpose of tonight i think for us is just to get some feedback from the board in terms of anything that you like or maybe don't like um you know to make sure we're kind of on the right track as we're as we're kind of uh working on detailing out some of these practices anything to add ron is that a good you're muted Okay, so this is part of a large grant that we acquired dude, he's probably 18 months, 24 months ago for $50,000 to help with looking at stormwater specific to the village center along Main Street, Church Street. Um, at the same time that that grant was approved, we had the Better Connections grant going on with Dubois King, which was looking at streetscape improvements, trying to merge those two efforts together. Uh, the plan that we're looking at for anybody that's online with video is also available for people on just the phone if you're near a laptop or um, ipad or something you can go to the hydeparkvt.com website and you'll find the same plan posted on the home page of the website so if anybody's not tied in and only looking at the phone and they don't want to log in through go to meeting feel free to jump over to the website and grab it from the home page there to look along with Andres. Um, and I think that's right. I think the, the public input here, there's a lot to go over. I know Andres will do a pretty quick job, but if we can break up the comments maybe by road, or I think we talked about maybe church, finished church yep. first, and then skip to the west side of Maine, and then finally do the east side of Maine, and then we'll, I'm not, I think as far as anybody having comments that are listening in or want to, feel free to send those at any time to my email address and I'll get them to Andres. It's ron, R-O-N, at hydeparkvt.com. So this is a public kind of presentation. So we do need public comment, uh, good or bad, or suggestions, and we'll add that to the, the grant work. Great. Uh, so I am right now, my screen, I'm, I'm going to start on Church Street and I'm going to head towards um, the intersection with Maine and I can zoom in on some features. But just to give you kind of the general of these different colors on this map, the, the red lines are surface type features where we're, we're proposing some modifications to the roadway alignment and also to parking or crosswalks. The blue lines on either side, that's where those are stormwater flow paths. So that's where the stormwater would be expected to flow. So that's why on this up in here, there's a blue line on either side of the road. That's because the, 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 the water would be flowing down the gutter line of each side of the road. And then there's this other blue color right here. And those are all subsurface stormwater features. So those are the three main colors of this plan. Um, and Tony, just jump in raise your hand or whatever and I'll stop talking if you have anything to go, as I go down here. All right. So, you know, starting from the top here, we're talking, we're proposing new curbing on the west side of Church Street to control the drainage. And that's directly a result of the fact we're observing where the drainage from, from Church Street peels off into some private land here. And um, we, think that we think that the best solution would be to install some curbing on the west side of the road. So that's what's shown right here. And essentially that curbing would come down and we would have uh, a dry well structure right down here, which would be designed to basically take that water from the curb line and, and infiltrate it into the good sand uh, underground. And <clears throat> likewise, we have uh, moving down here, we have another dry well here on the east side and coming down into here you can see we're showing actually some parallel parking spaces right here on the west side as we're moving down you can see that the the center line of the road we're actually proposing to shift to the east so moving down through here and so now we're right in front of uh, 214 Church Street. And we have, you can see right here, we have a new crosswalk with curb extensions at the post office. And one note right here, so we have a dry well right here. This is definitely a spot where there's a lot of water that comes down and then it actually ends up going west behind the post office. 
we're proposing to to intercept that and 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 infiltrate that water into a dry well right here. Uh, so we have this crosswalk right here, and as we go further south in front of 230 Church Street, we're showing diagonal angle parking right here on the west side. This is this is a little bit of a deviation from the Dubois and King plan, but we think that this actually makes sense to basically shift the road to the east instead of to the west. I think as it was, I think it was reversed in that plan. It would be more compatible with with the uh, the businesses on the on the east side here, and I think it just would make more sense to have this parking angled on um, on the west side in front of uh, 141 Main Street here. So that's kind of what we're showing in concept. <clears throat> so as we move down, we have um, new curbing and defined sidewalk on the east side of Church Street. So you can see right here, there's a sidewalk. That sidewalk actually, now I'm going back up north, it's running all the way up the east side of the road. So as we look at the we look at the intersection with Maine, we're showing essentially we have these curb extensions and within those curb extensions, these blue areas, these are going to be, uh, these would be planted stormwater features. You know, on the surface, they would basically look like rain gardens. So they could be planted with nice vegetation, but they would, they would have inlets on the curb to basically take the water uh, and infiltrate the water. And any overflow from the from those systems would kind of continue on down uh, to the west, um, down Main Street. Any overflow, but these would these would all be on all the corners. There would be a crosswalk uh, here, here, and here, and no raised table if a three-way stop control. I think one of the other concept had a raised table there. Yeah, this is. This is Susan. Um, one of the issues for the business across from the library, um, and 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 again, taking if that remains a garage or repair of some type of some type. I know they're interested in selling, but they're still there as a business. So just thinking of them as a business, you know, they have. Um, all the vehicles they're working on, they park there. Well, I can just see that being an issue. I can already hear them yelling. <laughs> um, About uh, well, what? Because how, how they have access in and out, how trucks that make big deliveries to them have in and out. If you run a sidewalk all the way through there, you've cut that side access off for them. So it you is know, an open, it's an open sidewalk. I was going to say, they could drive over that. An open sidewalk. <laughs> oh, good. Now I got different kinds of hot sidewalks to learn about. Okay. Okay. That was just, that was one of their concerns. Moving the parking over there would, would make a, um, would certainly make a big difference. And as I say, they're, they're, um, if, if anybody's got some money and wants to buy a nice lot and give it to the town, that'd be great. I'll put that on Facebook because <laughs> that would be, in my mind, that's wonderful. That would be a, another perfect little park, sort of a, you know, sort of an area or a ice cream store or something like that. Anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, got it. And Sidewalk, think, they can drive up over. A, uh, can I pipe in, so? Sure. Hey, uh, Rolly, you, you on? I'm right here. Hold on. Yeah, there yeah. it is. I'm not a fan of diagonal park, and I know more so was going to do it, but they had a lot of negative uh, uh, responses for doing it. Uh, can you shine some light on that? Well, the light that I've got is when you back out into oncoming traffic, what happens? Ka bang. <laughs> you get yeah. rear-ended. Yeah. Well, that's that's it's illegal to, to back out of any places like that, you know? And I mean, that was a big thing they were going to do over in front of 
um, morsel, everything, and I noticed that they never did it after I left. And, uh, one of the biggest problems were because people back out to the to the road and 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 they get hit and it's automatically the person's fault is backing out into the oncoming traffic it's against the law yeah and another thing i don't like about it a car is longer than it is wide so you come down through there in the winter with with uh, people parked there and removing some snow yeah you're not going to get the width of, of the plow <laughs> Plus, there's a curve in the road too, up above. Right. You can't see see as far as you should. That's right. You you come around. You're almost a library, so you you're almost to the post office where you could see those people pulling out by the library on the side of the library. So I, I guess I'm not a fan of that diagonal parking. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we know we have an issue with the speed that people come off the roundabout and come down that street. I think I think you're right. I think diagonal parking there, we are asking for trouble. One of the, um, putting the crosswalk at the post office with those curb extensions. Yeah. One of, at, in addition to just getting people across the street, that is basically, you know, throttling down on the road and is meant as a speed control just before you get to the center yeah. of the village and that parallel parking. I agree that it's a um, restraint for the traffic, but it also makes it harder to uh, maintain the road because of the curvature in it and make sure it gets cleaned out properly. Uh, I know they put them in like uh, Montpelier and uh, the work crews down there have to go in literally and hand shovel out some of the areas because they can't get it with the machinery. And I got one more question about the sidewalk on the east side. Mm -hmm. it, it, why are you having a sidewalk there anyways? Because starting right from the intersection, you got John and Judy's parking like uh, Sue just come up with. Then you got the apartment house, and that apartment house is all curb cut. So the, so the uh, rentors can, can pull in there and park their cars. Then then you've got the park water and light department, which is all parking yep. lot. Yep. So they pull in both sides of the building. So I don't see why you even got a uh, 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 sidewalk on that. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, well, it was connecting the... Uh, uh, the crosswalk up here in front of the post office, right? If you were, if you were, basically a way to navigate from the post office down to the center of town. And so, in this, we let's see, we lose. If I'm reading it, we lose the existing sidewalk. We remove, or is that still there? Uh, the west side. Yeah, the, the west side. side. Still no, there. I, that's still there. Okay, so we said, yeah, I, I'm. Boy. I think no, the east the east side of Church Street already has a sidewalk. It's it's a painted sidewalk going all through there. So there's not a right. there's not a big change with sidewalks right now. It's not a structured sidewalk. It's painted on the right. asphalt right now. Right. Right. Yeah, but but what I was getting at is all parking lot. Whether it's John parking lot. The, the uh, apartment house parking lot or the village water and light parking lot. It's all yeah, parking lot. It's all and then, there's, then there's a sidewalk that goes right up straight through until that fire hydrant. Yeah, there's an existing sidewalk right. on going on the east side all the way up, and then it disappears at a certain point. Um, <laughs> right. I'm not sure. Maybe by the the pool. Yeah, property, the pool so. property. Yeah. Yeah, just before there, yep. Yeah, so it's it, it's already there, so it's not a new sidewalk. Sort of, it's just, right. It's, it's acknowledging it as a sidewalk. You don't have, what's that? I said acknowledging it as, Acknowledge. as a sidewalk. Correct. Yeah, yeah or, I, I don't really. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think okay. people are going to lose. Okay. There. 
I, I think it's safe to say we don't like angle parking. How's that? <laughs> well, um, yeah. So, I mean, the alternative would be the um, parallel parking, right? Right. Just leaving that the way it is, but then we get the addition of the nice rain gardens and everything. Correct. You can still do all the the you know, and this and this is really at the intersection. I mean, that's definitely a, a big need for some drainage improvements. Yeah. I mean, as yeah. you guys know, there's <laughs> a lot of puddling right here, and yeah. the, there 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 just stands to be a lot of good stormwater improvement at this intersection. I think. Yeah. Um. Okay. So as we go, if we wanted to go down Main Street here, so. We're coming down, so we have these are all parallel parking spots right here. Yep. Either side, and we're showing. Uh, you know, there's a couple different options here for some subsurface stormwater, which could uh, be uh, right here, over here, also you know, right within the right of way, right here. There's a couple different options there. We probably wouldn't need all three of these. We could do you know one of these probably still meet our our goals in terms of the amount of runoff because essentially we have as we move down um, we have additional chamber system down here and right uh, right here actually in front of the opera house we were showing a um, optional raised speed table right here and a crosswalk with curb extensions crossing over right here. So bumping it in, crosswalk. And then down at the end of the street here, we're showing uh, a large stormwater feature in the yard of 25 Main, which is the Jim Pease's uh, family's property, I believe, right? There's potentially an option to have some stormwater over here. And essentially at that point, I think there's gonna be very little stormwater that's gonna be continuing west. Um, we do have right at the intersection right here, showing some other little kind of rain garden features, bringing it in, having a, a single crosswalk and some chamber systems right here. And the whole goal is basically at this point in time from a stormwater perspective, there would be very little, if any, stormwater which would be coming into the the gully, which is, you know, right about in here coming down the road. Anything to add on this side, Tony? Um, the, back toward the courthouse, um, to just note on the south side, we're, we're moving the curbing to the north so we can get a green strip between the sidewalk and the parking. And that was from the uh, Dubois and King. Right. Okay, yeah, new green strip along the south side, right. And that goes from Prospect to Depot Street. So the whole, whole way. Or right to here, Prospect. Talking, we're also showing just on Prospect right here, um, delineated parking spots. Widening Prospect with delineated parking. Uh, just to just to note, travel down here <laughs> to the loop. This is our little add-on type project here. We looked at this. We looked at this loop, and we were just conceptually showing an infiltration type stormwater structure in the middle of the loop. This would be an underground kind of a thing potentially, or it could be a surfaced kind of a structure too, just low in the in the middle there to manage the stormwater at the uh, at the loop. And talking about re, uh, refining the loop circulation as well here. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to go back up to the intersection here and then I'm going to go east. 
as we go east, uh, new curbing and green strip along the sidewalk on the south side of Main Street. Then we're showing up in front of the state building here. Um, we were showing some rain garden type features and actually uh, proposing a crosswalk right there as well. And the, the concept is kind of making this, this state building there kind of a, a, focus, a focus point and kind of having some nice landscape type features there. I don't know how to get it. And shut it off. Continue east here. Anything. He was snowshoeing, not Rainier, when he was caught in blizzard conditions. Hot water, stormwater features. He was unconscious. And then four way stop control at Main and Depot uh, with existing curbing. And this was. This was actually taken from one of the summit plans, I believe, right? Tony, yes, this was like a prior concept for um, reworking this intersection that we basically just uh, overlaid on our plan here. So that's the geographic extent of what we've come up with so far. So if there were any other questions on the main street part? The only other comment, Andres, um, on the east end, our intent is to capture, send more of the main street drainage at the east end to the west end. Right. So we're gonna, um, shift some of that drainage toward the west. Right, the surface divide is is about here at like 25, but we're talking about basically, I think, picking up from all the way almost back here. Correct. And bringing it the other way. And the reason that we wanna do that is because we have more opportunity to get rid of that water if we bring it west. Whereas at this point, you know, we're pretty challenged because the slopes get steep and the soils I think are 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 not as favorable over in this over in this side of the village as they are down at the other end. So we're intentionally as you know bringing it back the other way so that we can put it into those infiltration galleries and basically get rid of that water. Ron, anything to add or? I think the, <laughs> the other thing that's missing from the uh, goal of the project was one, not to, not to lose too many parking spaces. So part of the diagonal, the benefit of that diagonal is it provides uh, spaces to accommodate stormwater treatment. Um, if you're backing into traffic um, for backing, it was like backing into southbound traffic on Church Street is the concern that I heard from the board. Uh, I think the better connections Dubois King had backing into the northbound traffic, which is where cars are already stopped. You know, they take a right or left onto Church Street from me. So they naturally would, wouldn't be shooting off the, the roundabout. Uh, they're already stopped to take a turn and then they're faced with diagonal parking, which is probably the best condition if you're going to have diagonal parking is to have them back into it close to an intersection versus the uh, west side of Church Street, which, you know, if people make it through the, the bump out area for the post office and they're still going fast, they, they definitely would be going faster going southbound than they are coming off Main Street. So um, the, the other thing is the uh, grant application was looking forward for a number of years. So this is not a you know, a quick project. This is a five or 10 year window for all these improvements at least. And there's plenty of chances to re redesign and make changes and do all that um, additional public meetings. The 
potential for new impervious area is another issue that this grant was going after. So if you take a snapshot of the village and you have, let's say 15 acres within the village center that's parking lot or buildings and new development comes in, whether it's a addition to a building or whether it's a, a lot that gets developed that's undeveloped now, those all add additional stormwater. So under the state stormwater permits, any anything like that has to deal with the stormwater. It's part of their permit process with the state of Vermont. And this project provides enough municipal stormwater capacity to allow the development of the village center without having stormwater be a preventative permit issue. So just like the village a couple of years ago, I think 2015 now, got rid of the parking requirements in the village to help with any kind of people moving in, whether it was a restaurant or an office where they don't have to address a parking standard. This project takes another big issue off the table for investors, which is the stormwater, because the municipal system will have capacity to take that new mm -hmm. stormwater. Yeah, I, with with the with the exception of just having from the previous, um, I'd say ditch, take out the diagonal parking, leave us parallel parking there. Um, I th I think there are several other places thinking long term that some parking might be developed, and folks that have property in the village have talked about developing some off street parking, um, and I and I. I know what a negative response people have to that kind of parking, so I don't want them to then not pay attention to the rest of a very good plan because they don't like the parking. Yeah, hey, Sue, I, just, I just want to throw something out there, Sue. Yes, sir. Uh, and it all do with cost. Uh, with your little rainforest, whatever you call it, rain gardens and stuff <laughs> on that side road, the money to build that, also on the sides, to, to the money to to do your curb in and your your uh, strips and all that stuff. What is the cost of that compared? Uh, considering buying. The Don and Judy out and put that the parking lot. You don't have to worry about your, your parking on the side. Well, again, that's what I was, I, I was saying. I think, because again, this isn't a plan. We're not looking at saying, oh, we're going to do this in two years sort of a thing. This is a, this is a long-term look as how you want to develop and taking care of the stormwater and stuff. And that's why I think, um, I think up, up behind the old hotel, there's conversation about eventually doing some nice parking back there. And I think ultimately, uh, uh, you know, if we end up with that, you know, with John and with, with John and Judy's spot, you could do some, you could deal with the parking for the tenants and get them off the road. You know, you could do a few spaces there. You could do a little parking. I think there are a variety of things you can do there. And again, looking forward, taking care of the stormwater um, in this, in it's nice because you can now do it in ways that add aesthetically to your community instead of just having great big ugly drain sorts of things. Um, so I think I think long term, I don't know that the I'm I'm not so worried about the cost of the parking, and and again because this is a long term plan, you take a number of years to to sort of then stage it out and do it and say, okay, we go looking for money to do this. There, there's definitely, there are different pockets of money available to help do this kind of work because it's all about cleaning up stormwater. So I think the first thing to do is to have a good thought out long-term plan and then break it into, break it into segments that, you know, it may take us, you know, it may take us 10 years to get it done, <laughs> but that's, a, that's okay. Um, any little bit that we do, again, having in a few heavy rainstorms, gone and watched the literally the, sh the sheets of water pour down that street, then go around the corner and pour down the hill. Um, 
this this will this will all slowly but surely make a big difference to it. So so I so Dave, I guess I'm saying I don't think it's not as though suddenly here's a two hundred thousand dollar bill that you've got that we've got to do all at once. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Yep. Got any more questions? Uh, just a what's next from Andres. <laughs> right. Well, I was going to ask, <laughs> so what's next is <laughs> we... <laughs> We're, we we would like to conti continue to refine this plan and um, you know all these stormwater features that you see on here we basically need to put some real volume and real footprint in that yep. that, that allows us to put real money to, to them and, and you know we do that by sizing them um, so we have to do our, our modeling finish our modeling work to actually size those those structures and try to work towards getting a you know a a 30 percent plan that that people feel comfortable no. i'd be up on there if they could the, the landscape elements I call and do a video over them hey. i could have and it would have okay. me up off of my camera ryan you need him. to mute. i got him, I yeah, got him. Okay. um yeah right so so that's a, that's I think where we're where we're headed. Yeah. So we have, um, geez, I think we have what five months left, Ron. We're we're due to yeah, I'm just looking, yeah. Deliver this, I think, in in the in the spring, um, okay. and so I think soliciting the input from tonight. You know, I mean, we can I can discuss with Ron, I guess, where we want to go with those. You know, if if the decisions to kind of do away with those angled parking spaces and just keep them parallel. We can do that. Yeah, um, that's easy. <laughs> you know, and and then and then we'll come back. I I would imagine we would come back with a a more you know polished plan at some point here yeah. once we get to that stage. Yeah. One one of my disappearing acts was to get my desktop to work so I could. Oh, okay, now I got all your stuff up. <laughs> No, right, that, that makes sense. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Well, Ron will have a copy of the plan, and and as he was saying, you know, we'll just wait to see if any other comments come in, and then and then we'll uh, we'll move we'll move ahead. Super. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it you for your time. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Andres. Right. Good night, guys. Uh, Okay, so okay, so now I do I still I have well, let me see did did that answer people's questions about Prospect Street? Do you have give, give people a minute to mute, unmute, get back? I saw yeah, I saw Peg uh, Marcou left. But I don't know who else is on from Prospect. Okay. We'll know they can they can chime in here sometime if they want to. Yep. Um, the uh, shall we go to eleven elevens? Sure, you do that. Okay. Then, then uh, we'll be then we'll be done with highways. Yeah, highway the highway budget I sent around it needs some attention from uh, uh, Brian and Mark for the December meeting, but. Um, no no huge surprises in there um but back to the 11 11. so everybody's familiar on the current board with the process for 11 11 review of any work in the town right-of-ways that includes uh, village streets north hyde park up in garfield wherever you are and we've had um uh some letters that were written to the village of Hyde Park regarding uh, the need to acquire the 1111 before they did their utility work. And we're at a point with maybe needing a third letter, a reminder to them, uh, or potentially skipping to some more 
an intense reminder. So that's what we're going to talk about for two seconds. Um, we have a series of uh, sites within the town that were either begun or completed by the village without an 1111. And we actually do have a good 1111 permit for the water project. And uh, we have some applications that were submitted for other projects uh, that weren't issued. So it's kind of all over the board. And the most recent one was a couple weeks ago with a pole placement up near Dave's house. I think it was for the Banash project. Uh, and I think Mark French went up there to measure it and found it was 27 feet from the center of the road, but that the wires would go across the road. So the 1111s cover wires as well as poles, new plumbing, water, sewer, whatever. And uh, we, we need to have a, need to have something done. So anyway, we talked to the town attorney briefly to see what options are since they already have 2018 letter a 2019 letter from the select board saying get your 1111 before you do anything in the town right away and now we're at 2020 needing some additional action by the board the town attorney's option list is three basically uh, one is send a third letter which is basically a repeat of the 2019 letter just a reminder kind of letter get your 1111 please or we will potentially have to pursue legal action is where that letter went. The second option, and that's about a $500 cost to have the town attorney review it to make sure the letter's current and active, you know, accurate. Second option is a, a, a third letter again, but attached to the letter is a complaint, a formal complaint that the town select board would file in superior court. And that draft complaint would not be submitted to court <laughs> but it would give the village trustees the prelude to a formal action. Uh, the third option, and, and, and that was $1,000, a third option is much more expensive, which is to skip the letter and basically file a complaint with Superior Court for failure to comply with the 1111 statute. And that is a uh, starts at $5,000 and could end up with a trial. Uh, trial case between the town and village, which there's no known number for that, but just preparing for that and getting to the first step is is a heavy cost. <clears throat> so it's kind of up to the board to what what level you want to do it. Uh, usually, most people, whether they're residentials or businesses, uh, respond really well to the first letter. <laughs> so we're kind of moved beyond that to potentially a third letter, and at some point we need to. We need to have a good, a good respectful process of the eleven eleven, which we don't have right now. Well, you know the the village just continues to ignore any town regulations, um, and it's I know it's been a frustration to the board long before I came on the board. It's. Um, uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I just try to think if, 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 if this were an individual person who kept doing this, I think we probably would have responded with a letter from a lawyer a lot sooner. Um, and, and I think the, the reason the permits went so well with the water project is the village didn't do them. You were working with a consultant. And it's not a complex, it, it's not as though we're asking something that's going to cost the village money or take up a lot of time. Um, they could have their their chief poll person just let Ron know what, say, here's what we're doing and we're doing here and we're doing there and it's okay. I mean, it's not a, this isn't something that's going to be a big burden or that would be placing a big burden on the village to uh, basically what we're asking is to politely tell us ahead of time when they're digging in our right of way. Um, my inclination is to spend the $500 and have the lawyer send them a letter because in other circumstances where we have just gone and had a lawyer send them a letter, they have responded appropriately and we've gotten things done. And I'm, I'm, um, I'm sorry we have to deal that way, but it doesn't seem to do any good 
us sending them a letter. You know, I agree with you, Sue. If this, if this was a private sector, we'd be hanging a lawsuit on them. Uh, I, I agree with you. Have a lawyer send them a letter so they, they know what the rules are. And the next time, find them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's the second option, which was a uh, was David yeah. uh, Rue is the town attorney who sent the 2019 letter with all that information you just mentioned, Dave. He can send the same letter with a 2020 date, and the the second option was including the formal complaint to Superior Court, which is a that that whole process of the third letter plus the complaint, which is a draft, uh, is a thousand dollars. The five hundred dollars is the just having him reissue the 2019 letter without the complaint. You know, it, it's it's not very hard to do things right. <laughs> well, it, it apparently is. <laughs> <clears throat> we talked about this for three or four years now. Just this, this put it to bed. Yeah, so go with the spending up to $1,000 and have them send the letter and or or can uh ron you'll know if you've talked to him can you sort of two stage it you send them a letter ask for something back from them and if we don't get it then you file it now that takes too much time fully with it yeah, but they've they've gotten their let they've gotten their letters they've gotten they've their actually, letters. they yeah. followed the process too i mean that water project one worked really well whether they had support or not they still waited talked about it came up with a good set of conditions and, it, and it's in place now so i don't i don't know if it's just getting used to something that maybe was done loosely you know five or ten years ago where they never asked for 11 11s and we're just trying to train them but we've we've done it uh, two, two formal letters have gone out saying if you don't do this we may have to find you it's we're I, I i think the formal complaint really should open their eyes i guess to the the risk that another violation is is going to trigger what what Dave is suggesting is the, the fine yeah. penalty, which which can only be done through the court system, Dave. It, it's not a, we don't have a fine that we can ticket them. It's got to be issued by a court, you know, judge process. Oh, well. Rolly, you know, Brian, Roger, what do you think? Go ahead with it. Okay. I think if a couple of them got stung a little bit, the word would get out. Okay. Like, I'm sorry, but that, like David said, if it was an individual, we'd do it to them. They're no better, but they've been warned and been warned, so we might just well send it, get it over with. Yep. Okay. Got it, Ron? Uh yeah, what I'll what I'll do is have David work on that. And if you can um I I think it's a probably should be a motion in the yeah. Okay. Need need a motion that we yeah, have the town attorney, town draft, attorney draft. work on a letter and not draft, yeah. but not send the complaint, but send right. it with a third right. letter. So right. that, that would help. So, so okay. Second. Okay, roll okay. in and Brian. I got it. And Brian, yep. Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Ah, oh, now, poor Gihon Valley. They've been sitting there forever. <laughs> See how much fun we have, Liz? Absolutely. This is Dale. So it's it's been sitting there since 1910. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> We're all good. Okay. So what we have... Whoops, where's my agenda? Who is here from the GVH? I see... Dale and Liz, is that it? That's it. And I'll start with okay. asking for money, and then Liz will follow up explaining <laughs> the uh, part two of that. Okay. And part two awesome. is how we're gonna get, how we're going to get more money. How we're going to get even more money, <laughs> exactly. So I I believe Ron circulated to the board the thing that I submitted, which was a full page of words, but the short story was asking if the select board would consider raising the $3,500 that is annually allotted for the building maintenance up to $5,000.
And the reason that we were asking for that increase is that that is almost exactly the increase that will be coming from the cost of the Wi-Fi. Um, did everybody get the sheet of paper that got sent around? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, got so the other thing is like underneath that paragraph with the ask to consider that was the other line that said, we are not asking for the voters to approve any additional funding for the hall for this coming fiscal year. So the town's been very generous to us the last couple of years. So this year we're gonna try to stick with just the building maintenance budget and the full on push to uh, pursue grant funds. We've been doing pretty well in that regard. Um, our $3,500 is going as far as we can make it go. Um, we've spent about a thousand of it. Most of that has been in building materials from the Country Home Center. There's been not a nickel spent on any kind of labor because we've been doing a little work group um, at least once a month all summer long um, just to do the incidentals that were mentioned last year. We're sealing up windows downstairs. We have to build a utility room in the basement. Um, weather stripping the doors, that sort of thing. We've been able to put that in as sweat equity, but $3,500 is gonna get eaten up pretty quickly with the Wi-Fi addition and with the propane addition uh, for the furnace that is working now. I, I, I think that you, uh, we ought to put that on the down meeting for the taxpayers. And the, the reason I'm saying that, from going from 3,500 to 5,000, you know, 15, I mean, doing that or asking the taxpayers for more money to do something, it's the same money. Right. And, and, and the, only, the only reason I'm questioning it at all is Mr. Spitzer stood up at the last town meeting and said, if we approve that $19,000 and change, the Grange will not come back this year and ask for any more money. Right. And well, if you, if okay. You want to play that tape back? Play it back. That was said, and so so to me, you're coming back asking for more money. So I think it ought to go on the um, uh, town meeting for for the voters to decide. Okay, we weren't sure just exactly how to proceed with that. It's just uh, knowing that the. Um, $118.44 each month is going to cost about $1,400 each year. It just, we're worried that the $3,500 that's annually allotted for building maintenance wouldn't be enough to support that. Well, I understand that. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying what was said at, at and voted on at the last town meeting. So I don't think that, that the select board can, can, uh, uh, rule it on their own without going through the rest of the uh, taxpayers. Understood. Yeah, I think I, I think that's probably right, Dave. And it, it's interesting. It sort of ties into. Um, well, again, they're already asking whether uh, when people are asking for an increase. You know, usually you have to do the petitions and everything. And looking at with COVID and everything, that do we um, do we sort of waive that requirement, and we'll just do them? Uh, we can just do them individually. Uh, this is a this is an internal town committee, so it doesn't it's not subject to that. Policy. Doesn't need to be right. Okay. No, no. It's just like the planning commission or zoning board, or yeah, they're they're not an outside okay. service. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, we were also run, brought up the uh, possibility that since we do collect donations, that would it be smart to identify that any of those or some amount of those would go back toward or against that budget so we might not even need to use that increased amount of money? That one's rattling around in my head a little bit. <laughs> right. Well, these are just these right. are just uh, right. Right. nodding just eyes and crossing T's for you. You yeah. know, we we have not 
been able to have robust fundraising yeah. uh, because of COVID. However, we have held five events this summer yeah. where the doors have been open to the public and the donation jar is out there. Um, things like the road rally, which were very popular, uh, brought in a little over a hundred dollars. It doesn't sound like much, but the same yeah, thing. Yeah. The same thing occurred with the harvest uh, contest that we ran. Um, you know, we were there for Green Up Day. We were there for the Fourth of July. So we did our best to have some kind of fundraising, and we can only hope that next year will be better. Yeah, it has to be better. And then to be <laughs> able to actually have events there, which everybody's been dreaming of it may very well be that we don't need to spend a single additional dime out of the town's right, money. Right, right, right. Well, I think Dave's, Dave's right. How about we'll just, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll put it in the warning. Um, and, and again, you guys can basically make this, the same pitch then. <laughs> um, How see, we're going to do it. I have no idea, but yeah, that's, that's well, well, town meeting and how do you? What's it gonna be? I think I right. What does it? What does that look like for anybody? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like this. Yeah. Yes. I well, or or a combination thereof. I I I think, but we'll. Oh boy. Well, there are always interesting challenges all the time, aren't there? But um, I just, I think Dave's right, just because that's what, you know, Al had said and that it's appropriate um, mm -hmm. when you're asking and it's not us, it's not us being opposed to it at all. It's just, uh, and, and, and it was a, um, I know I mentioned as a concern when you went ahead with the, with the Wi-Fi, was this going to be an issue for you? Um, and and again, I think if, if it were any semblance of a regular year, you'd be able to raise enough money that you know that it you wouldn't need the extra money. But as we all know, it's not a regular year, so there isn't. So will that work okay for you guys if we put it on the on the town meeting thing? Most certainly, it's it's however you wish to handle it the best. And then we did not write endlessly about all of the different things that we have done over the last year. Ron suggested saving that for the entry into the town report. Right, right. That would certainly list each activity, each grant, um, hopes and dreams, but the the actual things that we had accomplished this year would be there to uh, to support moving forward and hoping for a better year. Right, right. Well, and I think that's always, to me, that's a a fun and interesting part of town meeting is when different groups can get up and say here, here are the fun and the neat things that they've done this year and here's here's how the community the community has benefited and enjoyed the having you around so okay so let me see what else do we need from there's any questions i can speak to the other topic yeah okay so um, in, in the realm of raising money, um, we've been researching grant opportunities that are a good fit for the project at the hall. Um, and we've been having a lot of conversations consulting with the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Um, and they have just announced a new um, round of grants that they're doing it's called the, the Brune Grants. And this is um, a fund uh, that's administered by the National Park Service Department of the Interior. Um, we, these are grants that range from fifty to a hundred thousand dollars, which we could do a lot of good work with. Um, what's nice is also these are not grants that require matching funds, so this would just be an outright chunk of money that we could work with to do some renovations on the hall. Um, and the, this this particular grant is is for just the kinds of things that we need to do, so insulating the building, um, restoring the windows of the building, helping with you know, repairing plaster work, all, all kinds of things that need to get done. Um, the thing that I wanted to raise with the select board is uh, if we were to go for this grant and be so lucky as to receive it, um, we would, one of the conditions of the grant is we would be entering um, a relationship with the Preservation Trust of Vermont that would be a 15-year easement um, by which any work on the building 
we need to go through and and when i say work i mean significant things like you know redoing the siding redoing the windows okay. um, not small things like replacing a light bulb or painting a wall um, but significant changes of the building would need to get approved um, through the preservation trust of vermont to make sure that we're abiding by historical standards um, so this is a big question um, that we've been debating quite a bit in our committee do we want to become um, a registered historic building, um, which there's a lot of benefits to that, but there's also um, challenges. You know, we, we would then have to stick to certain standards. We would have to go through this approval process anytime that we wanted to do significant work on the building. Um, so as a committee, we've, we've talked to the pros and cons and we've come around to feeling that we, we would like to um, become a, nas a nationally registered historic building. We would like to go for this Bruin grant. Um, we think the pros out outweigh the cons, um, but I'll speak to those very quickly and, and would just like to know what the select board thinks about um, entering this potential relationship. So um, reasons not to do it would be just that approval process. We would have to occasionally maybe spend a little bit more money to do certain repairs. Um, you know, depending on the materials required, um, the process of doing the repairs might take a tiny bit longer because of the approval process, although they've told us it's actually not that onerous. It's really just sending an email saying, this is what we plan to do. They usually get back to you within a week or two. Um, those are the reasons not to do it. The reasons to do it are, we would be eligible then for quite a few um, different grants that are aimed for historic buildings. So National Park Service has these this grant. Preservation Trust has a bunch of other grants that they um, do on a cyclical basis. So you know maybe next year we do the Bruin grant, maybe the year after that we could go for a different grant. So there's a lot more money out there that's earmarked for historic <laughs> buildings. And I just did historic and air quotes for those on the phone. Um, the other thing that, that we realize is really valuable is if we enter this relationship with Preservation Trust of Vermont, they then become an invested partner in the building. So they will help um, consult us at many points along our journey as far as, you know, what sort of contractors could we be working with for this work? How do we do this so that we do it right and don't have to go back and do it again? How can we do it in the most cost-effective manner? Um, because this is their whole business. They work with historic buildings day in and day out, so they know all the people in Vermont that can help us do the work that needs to get done and, and how to do it right. Um, so they'll be really invested in making sure that what we do with the hall is a success. Um, and then we also think, you know, becoming a, a registered historic building has a lot of appeal for um, potential revenue streams. So imagine someone wanting to have a wedding, you know, if they can say it's at this historic registered, you know, landmark building, that's a lot sexier than just, you know, it's at this old building. So I think we could really capitalize on the marketing potential of being an historic building as well. So that's the facts, um, but I wanted to, to see what the select board thought about this before we move forward with putting together the grant application. Liz, it, it's Brian Shackett. And uh, my question is, is I'd like to see some sort of a long-term uh, plan as far as um, restoration to the building, uh, mm -hmm. where you want to see it, what your outcome will be. Um, that's basically what I'd like to see. Uh, when I was filling in for uh, Roger, there was some um, issues that came up there or I was talking to with Al and uh, I'd like to see those addressed at some point. Um, uh, that's, that's my major concern. It's just some sort of a direction of where where it's going to go and what your outcome is going to be uh, long term. Yeah, that's a good point. And we do have a document that we put together over this past summer when we were applying for um, a grant from the Vermont Arts Council, which we did win, um, which I'd be happy to share with everyone on the select board. So we have this this document we're calling facility improvement plan, and it's kind of laid out our priorities for the yeah. repairs that we want to do. Um, but it's a living document. We may evolve it as we learn new things. And we've also, um, we've got plans to work with the Preservation Trust of Vermont to do um, an assessment with someone who can tell us specifically how we can approach the project of restoring the windows um, and how we could approach doing insulation and like energy efficiency for the building. So 
um, that's something that we're currently aligning up with them and it's uh, it's a grant that we've already gotten approval for. So that's something that we can add to that report. Great, that okay, sounds like a great start. Yeah. You know, I, I can understand why you're looking at that money, but you know, sometimes be careful what you wish for. What you're, what you're going to be doing is taking it, out, taking it out of the Hyde Park hands and put it into a federal program. And I can't think of a federal program that ever benefited the, 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 the people. You know, uh, and, 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 I kind of I like Medicare. <laughs> yeah. When I get that age, I may, but uh, uh, what I'm getting at, and I'm going to use an extreme example, uh, say down the road, Hyde Park voters say, okay, no, enough's enough. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the place is not uh, paying for itself or some, and I'm using it extreme. Uh, we we'll, would not be able to do anything if we're locked up into this. Uh, and you hit on it. Uh, uh, now you start having uh, functions in there. The, uh, they, they could come in now and say, well, you only can have so many people now because now you're going to have to have air control systems. You're going to have to have so many exits. You're going to need so many ramps. You're going to need yada, 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 which we can get away without now even though we probably should have them, but we should get away without them because we're not locked into any federal program. And so that would just be my concern. Be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, to with that in mind, we have reached out to a similar hall in um, Guilford, Vermont. It was also a former Grange building, and they have been working with the Preservation Trust of Vermont. They received the, the Bruin grant the previous year when they did this program. Um, we haven't had a chance to connect with them directly yet, but we wanted to hear from them, you know, what's that relationship hey. been like? Has it been onerous? Has it been beneficial? What could we learn from their experience? Is there a time factor on this grant? Um, it's, a, it's a moving deadline. So the deadline for the grant was supposed to be, I think, December 15th, but I just heard today that they're probably pushing it back. Because if you've got time, I think it's worth doing some more homework on it. Mm -hmm. And well, and of course, then there's always you apply. It doesn't mean you're going to get it either. Um, right. But but it's um, have, having seen around the state and worked with the Preservation Trust Fund, they are it's a terrific group of people. And it's sort of one of the, the process you guys have gone through and thinking about it is um, once something is an historic building, you can do, um, we've done a couple of bridges that um, we got them in as, um, as, as historic sites. But you, you then, they'll come in and tell you what you do and what you need to do, but then you have to, your, everything you do is going to be a lot more expensive but yeah. the door is open to all kinds of money that it's not open for now. That's the, that, those are the sort of the two sides of it. Um, and, and lots of people um, and other foundations will help with funding once a building has that um, official designation because um, sort, of, sort of for what Ron is saying, Gee, they, you know that uh, 15 years down the line, people, the town isn't suddenly going to take it and I, I don't know, turn it into, I don't know what. Because um, so, so they are, you are, you're locking yourself, you're locking a building into something and the people that support it. And as I say, listening to you, you guys have gone through the pros and the, the, the pros and the cons. Um, I, I think it would be very helpful to talk to, there's a Grange that done, that's done it, but if there are some other sort of smaller projects that have done it. A lot of times the historic buildings are, you know, gigantic multi-million dollar kinds of things that they get into. So um, pe people that have gone through it, and particularly if somebody that's done it for a while, they'll, they will be aware of the, of the downsides, but, but they, it absolutely opens the door to all kinds of, of grants that will not be open to you any other way. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, we, and Dave, we're, we were right there with you, you know, earlier in our conversations as a committee, we had a lot of hesitations for all the reasons that you're raising. Um, so, okay. you know, definitely eyes wide open to that. I just think as we've started thinking longer term about how we're gonna fund the renovations of this building, we're seeing like what Susan's saying, that, that becoming an historic building could just open up so many more doors to revenue streams, whether it's grants or whether it's, you know, people wanting to donate to the project that we were of the mind that it would be worthwhile. But I think what we can do is follow up with um, some of the other grant recipients, other people that have partnered with Preservation Trust and try to get some more, you know, firsthand experience um, feedback from them about whether they feel it's been worthwhile. Yeah, and I understand, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not against it. I just don't want to be in the position and say, what did we do that for down the road, you know? Yeah. Okay. What I'm hearing is um, we have the select board's support in going ahead with the grant application, but as, as to whether we win the grant or receive the grant before we accept any money from Preservation Trust, let's make sure we've done a little more homework um, talking to other organizations to really understand the pros and cons. Right, because you can, and I um, had the state do that a few times, actually, that you, you know, you can, well, here's the window and it could be, and we think it's a good deal, go ahead and apply for it, and then you get some more information or this going to Dave's with it when it's was some federal money and then oh yeah here was the fine print and the eight other things that we went you know what and they offered us grants and we didn't take them they said yeah. oh we've just discovered that there are way too many strings tied to this for thank you very much we don't we don't uh, we've decided not to take the money so sounds like a plan okay it'll be, be curious just to uh, just to hear what you you know what you hear from the other people that have that have been there for a bit yes we'll keep you in the loop super thank you thank you for everything you're doing yes no problem yeah thank yeah you. right <laughs> thank um, you all we have our, our wreath lighting ceremony coming up on the 5th and we're talking about probably making that a virtual event in light of the um yeah you know, recommendations from the governor so just fyi we're, we're moving forward with that in partnership with the high park community circle but uh it will be something we're just live streaming okay <laughs> as opposed to in the yeah and sometimes you know and truly with the weather if you and, and doing a little publicity you'd be sometimes with some of this live streaming or finding you get more folks than you might any other way yeah and we don't have to deal with parking yeah we don't that's right <laughs> or the cold. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a good evening. Bye, Liz. Okay. How are we doing here? Okay. Eight o'clock. Um, outside service agencies funding requests. Um, and, and particularly as we seem to be going further and further back into lockdown mode do we do we want people that are new i know of one group that's new that would like to ask for money um do we want to forego the petitions and just have them as a to talk about at at town meeting um what are we are yeah go ahead i would this year we can't ask people to go and get so many petitions you know and to put people in harm's way yeah yeah i think so and i don't think they're going to be that many um you know there aren't usually that many new things and we change the amount of money so if people are just going up a little bit they didn't need to you know we'll just automatically do it so i don't expect there are going to be a lot of things and if if somebody's new, it's just like, uh, you know, it's just like taking the 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 Grange and saying, okay, let's let's have a conversation about this directly at town meeting and see what voters want to do. You know, whatever we decide on the town meeting, when they do that, if somebody is new coming in, just tell them they got to have somebody on 
uh, virtual to, to explain to the yeah. voters what it is. Yeah, yeah, to talk about it. Okay, so what? Probably we probably need a motion, huh, Ron? Uh, I think there's a there. Yeah, there's a question of commitment um, of the, of the board. So basically, how it would work is if you waive the petition requirement tonight, it would apply to one or more new agencies that are asking for new money. And they would be added as an article at town meeting day with whatever their letter requested. And then you'd have a discussion at town meeting day. Yeah. The select, the, because it's a select board policy, um, you're not bound by that. You could, you could practically, even though it wouldn't be very popular, change your mind all the way to the time the warnings put together towards the end of uh, January. So if, if Kim, or I get a call for a new money request and we tell them that the select board has waived the petition requirement this year, then they need to have confidence that they are going, going to be added in January to the article. So it's, a, it's kind of a two part process that do you, do you. But they need to send that send, will they send us like a letter of intent or something? Yeah, they'll send us a letter, letter and give us the whole spiel about their agency and what the service is to Hyde Park and how much money they want for FY22. And that would form the article that goes before the voters at town meeting day. But the select board, if they start to waive and, and not require the petition, which forces you to add it to the town meeting, then you, you're sort of saying, yes, we will add you to the article. So it's yeah. a two part. Okay. We want to be able to tell people both. Yes, they did waive it, and they won't change their mind at the end. They'll put it as an article. Right, right. I, I, everybody okay with that? Yeah, that 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 would be kind of odd for that to happen, but it's a possibility since you control it. But if you're committing to the waiver, then I would say commit to the adding it to the warning. Adding it, sure. Yeah, I wouldn't want to tell somebody not to do it, and then they don't sh not put them on it. I don't know what happens if we get 10 or 20 new agencies. Maybe we want to revisit, but if it's one or two, no, not a big deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think there are going to be a lot of new people asking for money this year. Famous last words again. Okay. Okay. So that would, yeah, that would be a vote to uh, waive and add uh, new requests as articles. Okay. So that's, we need that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Okay. Oh, now the village water. You guys, you guys missed a terrific meeting. Um, I was there and I can't say the same thing. Oh, you were there. Okay, good. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Woo! I would have known. You. I would have been. I would have been texting you, Dave. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, so uh, so Joel Page. Oh wait a minute. Now let me go. Flip this back here to possible snap. Let me get back to those meetings. Village trustees. Um, uh, Joel Page and their lawyer Dan Richardson. Uh, were um, did most of the talking, and the uh, the village said they set up time. There were like there were a total of twenty plus people on the on the call. Um, they were concerned that if everybody wanted to say something and everybody had five minutes, that would take too much time. So everybody, please uh, take their time talking. So, and it's obviously since it was uh, the side judges who had asked for the letter, Joel, Joel sort of basically just did a summary of, of their letter. And then um, he let their, uh, their lawyer talk, uh, as I say, Dan Richardson. And, and uh, he, he, was, he was excellent. Um, the, the village, and, and he sort of, the, the, it sounded to me as though the Dave, see if you agree with this, but the crux of his argument was that, and he went back to the village charter and that, um, you know, you can do improvements in things, but you have to basically have to treat everybody the same. And that what they've done by treating these different classes of people, um, is not something that they're allowed to do. 
um, and that you know that that they were uh, they they'd be um, they weren't looking to get into litigation over this. They'd be happy to sit down and work with the village to come up with something that was. Um, uh, you know, that, that was equitable, but he's, their basic argument is that the entire system for paying for it that they've set up is not an equitable system and they don't have the authority to do that. Um, they, they then went from, um, um, the, the, the trustees then, Ricky, Ricky read, <laughs> Ricky began explaining how they had set up the system that they'd set up and how the money had been split. And um, Joel also said, you know, they felt as, uh, you know, as, as the county properties that they had uh, always had a very good relationship with the village and that their property was used for a lot of things for the village. And, you know, and, and, uh, and then the village began to explain everything they did for the <laughs> they did for the court properties and I think once they got past plowing the sidewalks they didn't have a lot further to go um the uh, the explanation again it was for me it was a it was a it was a classic village carol presentation that after about three minutes, you were so lost, including Ricky was lost and had to keep asking Carol to explain things. So they must have talked for, what, maybe 20 minutes, Dave? They basically used up all the time that they had allocated for people to talk to explain to us how they would worked really hard and it was really fair. Um, a couple of things that they said that sort of stood out to me, and I was... Um, uh, Eric Osgood and uh, and Larry Wyckoff, who's the chair over in Cambridge, were were on the calls, and um, we started texting each other and going, "Wait!" <laughs> First of all, it sounded as though they didn't even think about the rates until after they'd passed the bond. And I know Ron went back and looked, and they had talked about about uh, what what users could expect your rates to go up and it was about 12 percent which is about what they have done for the for the residents in the in the village um ricky then referred to the the letter and i, I think you've all seen that yeah we passed it on to everybody the letter that came from stowe and um how she took very they took very personal offense at that and ricky then took off on a tear that I thought, particularly in a very public meeting, was totally inappropriate for a chair to do. Now she thought it was slanderous. And um, uh, it was it was all about politics and I kind of got lost there too. Um, we, at that point, they said, well, they, uh, they appreciated everyone's input and basically the time was up. And um, Larry Wyckoff just said he'd like to speak and that he just, um, he felt again that the kind of increase that they were looking at and having no input in it, that, um, that uh, he would, he was going to recommend, and again, the Cambridge board is meeting tonight and so is Johnson. And Eric's going to recommend that we all join together with the side judges and just have one lawyer who represents all of us. There's no point in going you know, trying to get a bunch of different lawyers and might as well have one approach to it. It was abundantly clear to me um, that the village is totally locked into what they're doing. They think they've been really fair and um, um, they've worked really hard to come up with what they feel are perfectly reasonable rates and that uh, infrastructure is really expensive and we just needed to appreciate that and all the benefits we as a town and county got from these improved infrastructures and and I was and I was really really good and didn't say anything so is that about sum it up Dave yeah, yeah like, I said, the, like you said the half of her presentation I couldn't make heads or tails about <laughs> no <laughs> <clears throat> uh, part of it I thought the, there were sort of two different routes they could have done, gone and uh, and part of the gist of it that we should appreciate because they came up they uh, they decided to go the route that was less expensive, and I was thinking, thank goodness we went the less ex the least expensive route. Um, but, but it's just 
this yeah. not possible for, to raise some people, what they say, 5,000%? Oh, I think Was the that, courthouse is 10,000. 10,000% 10, increase, right. So the, Which the is a lot I, different. Yeah. The way I understand it, they borrowed that 4 million, was it? Or yep. something. And they've only got 233 uh, accounts. And, and instead of, of raising the one in two family dwellings, they put it all onto the towns and you miss buildings and hire on any businesses if there is any well they 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 raised as they said before and what they sold the bond on is they said users rates excuse me we're users users rates would go up about 12 percent which is what um if you're a homeowner single homeowner in the village that's about what you're going up but then to, and again, they have this, I, I'm, I'm just, as we have talked before, I'm so stunned at the entire thing that I just, um, so I, so um, my recommendation is that we, um, as the other towns are going to do, and I think the school is going to as well, because what's happening now, the way school budgets are passed, is this hit on the elementary school will just get rolled into the, you know, the, the county budget, the the Lamoille North budget, and I think that cost is going to get spread out over all the other towns too. Actually, Eric, Eric, and Larry and I were thinking we should get together and figure out how to learn how to do really expensive projects and have everybody else pay for them. Yeah, well, but you, uh, but you stop to think about it is. It, with the sheriff's departments going up, that's going to affect his budget. Uh, the schools going up is going to affect their budget. Yeah. Uh, and what uh, the, the fire department is going to affect their budget. So in essence, the town people are going to be help paying for the village budget. Oh, sure. Well, they, and the thing is, it's not just the town people. It's the entire county. Yes, right. <laughs> you know, um, and again, because of the way because of the way the school budgets work now, they'll, the, the entire school district will be, I think that's, aren't I right, Ron? The entire school district will be paying for the hit that the Hyde Park Elementary School takes. Yeah, that gets rolled into the, the state formula and gets paid by, I think it's a, it's the formula uses some state resources and has a surcharge for local increases. So it depends on the amount of the increase. If it goes over a certain threshold, then you could end up paying more locally than the state revenue gives you. It, okay. There's a percentage of what you're allowed to increase every year. If you exceed that, then you have to fund it yourself. If you are under, <laughs> if you're under, yeah. So then it would be the a surcharge on the local school rate. Oh yeah, that'd be oh great. I, mean, I don't that know what, happy. that really it really matters to what the overall school budget is then you add on the water increase to that and see if it goes over the allowed um, oh, state. I'm sure. yeah. i'll bet you the water increase takes it over period yeah i don't i i didn't see a good did they present a good listing of every account with the new and old rates did they do anything like no, that I, at the meeting no no, I think it's just what they had sent out. And Dave, you had the you had the best run on that stuff that I've seen. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I believe, it was seven dollars and forty nine cents per thousand gallons. Yeah, usage. Yeah, but then what's the what's the sort of the flat charge that the school's going to get every year for the infrastructure? I didn't get the schools. All I get to all I yes. got was yeah. Okay. You missed a thousand. You look at what the courthouse is. You can guess what the school is. Uh, uh, Rogers. <clears throat> the sheriff's department is seventeen hundred and forty-one dollars per month charge. And we got yeah, that's close got to fire station. Top of that, that starting whenever the. Uh, Wastewater charge is going to be another eight hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, those are those are the numbers that we need to understand for our budget. What what those will be? Right, right. So 
so um so what do you think Roly and look at that we're just we're just saving Roly's tax dollars all over the place here <laughs> is there is there a token village resident um I mean I just I think I think it makes sense to join with the with the side judges and pay for the lawyer and we'll figure out how to split up the costs. This is our um, yeah. What, what, what is the projection for the attorney? What, uh, what the outcome will be? Have, well, have we they researched we, we, that we, part yet? No, we don't. I, I can add, I can enlighten some people if you're interested. This is Madeline sure. Lotta, the other assistant judge. We're yeah. meeting with, uh, Joel and I will be meeting with the attorney uh, again on Wednesday uh, and go over the meeting and all that. And um, we're going to try to keep communication open, but yeah. um, and see if we can, you know, settle, uh, negotiate uh, a rate that's more equitable. And but we're also going to be talking about starting litigation now. <clears throat> I know some of the other towns aren't aren't users, so I think there there may be an issue of standing for using the same lawyer in in all that, and I'll. I'll discuss that with the attorney to, on Wednesday. But okay. I think Hyde Park, I think, would, you know, you folks, I think, have standing because you're users, uh, direct users. But I think, like, Stowe might not, you know, because um, they're affected in a secondary way. Uh, well, in a direct way, but they're not. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so we're going to, it would be great to get everybody on board, but we're going to clarify that on Wednesday also. But I okay. think we're we're hoping that we can resolve it and not be doing this three years from now and uh we'll take if it goes to litigation it'll take a take a while to get into a you know to get into a court and start doing the form the the formalities of that but we're prepared to do that we're also looking at at um possibly drilling a well <laughs> like other people in, yeah in, yeah. Why not? You know, but then that leaves us with the uh, wastewater uh, fee. But altogether, yeah, our fees are going to be almost forty-two thousand or more a year. Yeah, uh, going. You know, when they were originally like, I, I got twenty-eight dollars a month or something per per building. So it's outrageous, and it, and uh, it's outrageous that we weren't at least given a phone call uh, to tell us this was happening so that we could weigh in but now the bank you know now it's public public information that uh their backers for this for this bond aren't aren't there so we'll see what you know, i'm sure they're not happy about that being made public um and i don't know how much they have in the kitty to fight to fight an action either i don't think they have a lot of money so uh i think we're in a pretty good position we just gotta, we just gotta keep at it, and we and we intend to do that. We're just, we just find it outrageous, you know. So. Yeah, well, because of course, and I, again, I can see. Well, it'd be interesting to ask because I see. I think the same. Well, a number of the towns, particularly Cambridge and Johnson, um, are going to be hit by the amount that the school goes up as well. Yeah, I heard that tonight. I hadn't thought yeah. about. That. Yeah, that's hard. The, so, so in terms of, you know, whether their, um, you know, their ability to join the suit is, is coming from a couple of directions, you guys in, in one, you take, you take care of, of part of it, but then they've still got the school end on it. And if it, and if it's, um, uh, right. It makes it a stronger case to have the towns with you. I, 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 having had several long conversations with those two chairs, I know they are perfectly comfortable. They're saying, hey, spending a little money on a lawyer is going to save us a lot of money long term. Right, right. No, we want everybody uh, involved. And we did reach out to the school right away. Yeah. Uh, when we saw who was getting who was getting hit like we were, we, we reached out to those entities. And um, so... Yeah, we're you know we're looking at trying to move something along pretty pretty fast. We did pay, did make a payment under protest that 
payment went in with our letter of protest and uh, the bleeding, I guess, will continue till this re gets resolved. Um, um, yeah. Okay, well, if, if, if you have a, <clears throat> have, have a chat with your lawyer, um, okay. And, and um, you can, Joel, Joel has my number, you can reach out to me or Ron and uh, let us know what we need to do. Again, one of our questions is, are we supposed to pay it or do you pay under protest or what's the right thing to do? Yeah, we paid under protest. You know, our, that, that letter, that first letter was accompanied yeah. with debt. And we intend to keep doing that. We don't want to get slammed for any other penalty or what other, what other uh, concoction they're going to come up with in the, in the interim. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, the, we didn't get, you know, we're looking for the document that, uh, I was looking for the document that Ricky generated in, uh, so I could try to go through it again because the explanation that the general manager gave was very opaque, kind of double speak and, um, and we need to see that, see what she presented so it should be available and I want to you know we will be looking at again for a shred of kind of um just a, a shred of explanation of where 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 did this come from so um we know oh, <laughs> I think a lot of ways it was it was pretty simple they borrowed four million dollars and they had no way to pay for it <laughs> right, so, but so you got to make everybody else pay for it you know and you don't you know we had no and and again because initially in, as they were selling the bond and doing all this stuff, they said users would go yeah. up about 12%. Well, okay, I'm, I'm happy, I'm, we'll do 12%. Yeah. That works yeah. for us, it worked for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, just the scheme, the, the scheme and the structure of it, uh, she wasn't real uh, clear about oh. where she came up with that. Not that I guess it matters, but it's, it's kind of um, you would think there would be everyone would be on board with how that happened and and Ricky all, uh, immediately was fee made a feeble attempt of explaining that and handed it over to uh, Carol who like I said did a you know magic uh, swirling uh, magic cloth <laughs> where here we you know yes here, that's right yeah it was ridiculous so anyway that we're on it and uh, and uh, we'll we'll keep in communication for sure. You know, once we we speak with the attorney again this Wednesday, okay. and I'll ask him about about standing and and joining. Um, you know, you, you folks joining and maybe the school if they're interested. Um, yep. Yeah. What a mess. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Do you have any questions for for Madeline? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Hear from you later in the week. Okay. You will. Bye bye. <clears throat> so, Susan, uh, Susan, just a little quick uh, snippet here. Uh, back in October 2019, the uh, village bond was on the on the on the vote. <laughs> October 16, and the, the bond passed 74. To six, which is uh, the number of people voting is twenty. It says twenty percent of registered voters, and Woo. so then they talk about the uh, the bond cost. This is an article at News and Citizen. The bond will add an estimated forty dollars per year on average to a village customer's utility bill. So the math the math didn't work way back then, I, so I don't know what where where the missing piece is. Like Madeline was saying, how do you go from twelve percent or forty dollars a year to you know fifty thousand a year? Anyway, so <laughs> time, that's time all I had. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Town meeting hey. day. Yeah. I want to roll roll it. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
the, the fire station. I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about drilling the well over there if this keeps up. But can, can we get water to fill a tanker from a hydrant that, that we don't have to go through that uh, meter? You can fill a hydrant from the hydrants, yeah. We can. Yes. But they, 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 I, I, I got one of the things to throw out there, and I can't remember. I've been trying to remember who I talked to, and I can't remember who I talked to. They run into the same situation in a town, okay? And they said the same thing. They were going to drill a well, but the people that were on the system could not get off the system after the bond was voted because if they did, the village could sue them. And I can't remember who it was and which town it was I was talking to. So many people. Yeah. They couldn't get off the system because they wanted to do the same thing you were talking about, is drilling a well, which is $10,000. And that's what they were thinking about down there to the courthouse. But I don't think that's the legal part, I guess. But you, I, they told me, I can't remember who it was, said they could not get off the system when this was going on, or they would have been sued. Yeah, so that, okay. that would be a good thing to check out. Was that Brent Lamphier who said that? I don't remember. I, I'm trying, trying to sit here while I was listening to the side judge and everything talk, and I was going to bring that question up, but I can't remember. Yeah, I think it, it was it was somebody Brian, I think you're right, because I'm thinking, yeah, I heard, I think it was somebody that was at the Eden Fire Department yeah. meeting. Eden oh, yeah. Fire Department. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's a good question for a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> because I want to know, too. <laughs> yeah. Is the only, I'm going to. Is the only Go ahead. thing that affects us with, with the town is. The fire department, what did the rates go up for the village garage? And, and the, the library went up, not, not according to across the road, but they went up. But uh, did, did the town garage go up? I haven't, I haven't seen a water bill yet for the town garage. No, uh, I think we, we were I think, yeah, we, do. I think we add all the uh, the town addition in and and whatever it costs and raise the rent that amount. Run that by me again, Dave. Right. Add all together what extra it costs the town for the water that then raise the the, the, the village rents part of our town offices raise the rent. So it would be status quo even. Yeah, we are. But the question was the other night, I don't know about that one. The question was the other night, is, is Lamoyo Union on Village Water or not? We didn't, whatever. some of them said it was and some of them said it wasn't. I don't know. I, I don't think it gets out that far. I know, I know they have a, um, they have their, Water pond for the dry the dry hydrant sources, which makes right. me think there's right. water supply to the building. Right. I I think maybe part of that confusion may have come from um, because of the way the the budget's done now, so that our elementary school would roll into the big budget. So that's how it would impact everybody. I think. I think that may be the confusion there. Cause yeah, cause I didn't think they were on the they were on village water. No, well, I don't know. I know it's a good question because I don't know either. I guess Eddie would probably know. It probably isn't still online. Yeah, I'm I'm here, Rolly. I, I'm pretty sure the Union School is on. Uh, the they have wells down there for the their yeah. domestic water use, as well as okay. their own sewer system. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised the town highway garage didn't get zonked. I mean, you must use quite a bit of water up there in the winter when you make your brine and, and in the summer when you make your your uh, uh, 
chlorine and stuff, don't you? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying we're not. I just haven't seen it yet. We just haven't seen the bill yet. <laughs> oh, okay. The chlorine, the chloride doesn't matter, Ed, because that's all mixed when it comes. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, the brome, the brome will do a hit. Yes. Okay. Um. Town meeting day. Just, just to start thinking about what we want or what we need to do this year. Um, Ron and I were talking a little bit earlier today, and I'm thinking, thinking of the number of folks that we usually show up. I would think that the high school auditorium is large enough to be able. To, again, who knows what our numbers are going to need to be. But I would think that would probably be large enough to deal with the quantity of folks that we have at town meeting. Or if the, we have X number, you could always say people, you know, if we can do 75 people in that room, um, the first 75 people to register can be in the room and then everybody else would have to do this sort of thing. And and I don't we don't have to make any decisions right now, but it's just something we need to be aware of. Um, and of course, then you get into we already the school budget is already an Australian ballot. Um, we do our uh, you know our the select board is an Australian ballot, um, but the the town the town budget isn't so. Um, Just, yeah. So one thing to think about, um, in addition to the meeting part of it, there there are polling hours that day from um, typically I think it's like eight thirty to seven o'clock at night. So right. when when we do town meeting at the high school, the polling is in what's called the senior lobby right. at the high school. And that's a much, much smaller space than the town meeting room downstairs. So we would even be more limited to bodies in that room, you know, if we are having to be really careful about, you know, occupancy. Literally, it'd be one person at check-in, one person at check-out, and one person at a time voted, or two. Just it's just that that room is that small, so it's just something to think about when we're thinking about town meeting. Yep. Susan. Yes. It, it's Brian, and yeah. um, I, I think one other thing we gonna need to consider uh, as well, and I think you've seen it in the media, it's not just the volume of people in a room; it's the ventilation system. I know that right. a lot of the schools have been faced with that. And maybe it's already been dealt with at Lemoyne Union High School, but uh, uh, we may not. You may want to inquire ahead of time to see if the ventilation system has been upgraded there to uh, to handle the volume. Well, yeah, or if it's added because you know it's going to be a. I'm I'm just thinking usually town meeting. I don't know, Dave Rowley, How many people are usually there town meeting? I'm going to guess about 100, uh, 100 to 150. Yeah, there's that's usually about anywhere it. between. There's usually anywhere between 75 to about 160 people. Yeah. Okay. I don't, oh, man. <laughs> and I, I know the league is already, you know, they're talking about it and then sending out ideas, and it's, um, I. Can somebody look in to see if let us use a gym down there to the Memorial Union for some people and put a speaker in there? Oh, yeah. I don't know if they'll let you in on that floor or not, but that would be something to think about. That's only across the room. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Boy. <laughs> this this is kind of topic again as Kim says, oh yeah, and then we've got okay, yeah, you got the voting and where do you do that? And that uh, we should um 
Sim. Quer dizer, dentro pelo menos estou. Yes. Do, do they all use the same gym? There's two gyms at the school. There's a high school gym, which is much larger, and there's a middle school gym. Right. Okay. So how how would how would we like to go about beginning to figure this out? How far apart is the middle school gym away from the auditorium? Not that the far. School, so the middle I don't, school gym is literally inside the middle school side entrance. You'd have to keep walking down the hall towards the center. Yeah. Where the polling is get to the auditorium it just depends on which way you're coming in and if we yeah i'm there's so many places controlling their entrances and exits so like one way in one way out and that's such a big building that i don't really see us being able to do that because then people are literally walking you know half a quarter of the way around the building to get you know either into the building or back to their car from the exit Well, I don't think it matters how big the building or, or the uh, the space is going to be. I, I don't think you're going to get the people to come out anyways. Well, and that's why particularly if, if we do, you know, it's a combination of, of you know, of this uh, virtual meeting and in person, you know, some combination thereof. I think you're right. I think a lot of people might well opt to just do the virtual. I know. Well, I, I, hold it. Yeah. Hold it at the field days. <laughs> might be a little chilly. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, the, the other thing, Susan, I think the other idea was, and I think Dave started what I was thinking is you have this tradition of town meeting day. You have some people that prefer to go to keep up the tradition no matter what. You have a lot of people saying, I don't want to be close to anybody. So you have that mixed, mixed missions, if you want to call for how people want to do it. So, you know, if you move, and you have the option now with the state law changing this year. If you were to break up the budget, just thinking out loud, uh, to articles, so you don't have an all or nothing on the budget, but maybe you break up the budget, like you wanted to break up the um, the guy on oh. the wall. Yeah. yeah. That gives more people a chance to participate, but it also significantly reduces the number of people that would go. Not to mention what Dave just said, which is people aren't going to go anyway if the situation doesn't improve. But you can keep up the tradition of an in-person one for people that want to go and just want to try their best to make it happen, which is what I think Susan's trying to do is, is there any way we can make it happen? And, I, and having 100 people get 75 that sign up, you know, whatever the number is, still, it, it feels uncomfortable to me unless you really upgrade your protocols and what things like Brian was saying, the ventilation, the controls, having people, you know, wait outside in line because there's only two people at a time allowed where the voting goes. It could get it could get really difficult to even meet protocols if we're in the same situation in in three months, which is appears likely since the best outlook is a May or June type time frame. And so it's hard to make a decision now while you're trying to solve this problem that's sort of sort of changing. You know, it's it's a lot different this month than it was last month. So yeah, maybe we just let it ride for another month and, and just talk about this again on, in December and see what's changed or what's not changed. And by the end of January, you have to make a decision one way or the other. <laughs> so you, and we'll you see where the vaccines are. That sounds good. 
Yeah, and we can we can do a little more homework between now and then to sort of see what options are because other towns are starting to try to you know to wrestle with this as well. So, great. Um, so, so keep we get them keep all in mind with the gym. Was that Roger? Would they all fit in the gym in Hyde Park in the village? No. I, I don't think so, and I think the audit is the audit. That'd be interesting. Is the auditorium larger? 150 people. Let's have no let's idea. take a second. Let's hey guys, let's take a second and put the auditorium in perspective. If any of you have been into a church, uh, they go every other pew and, and they block them off. Okay, that right. creates a six foot there. How do you block them off for the aisles? of seating which is what 15 20 wide in the auditorium you're crossing over in front of everybody's lap or you have a family of five in one spot then you have to have six feet between them and the next person it, it, it you'd be better off with like folding chairs in an open area type of thing is what you'd be better off with and again we haven't even addressed the ventilation part Phew. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, again, we just as much we come up with a list of questions and start trying to figure out what our options are. And again, every <laughs> every town is going to start thinking about this and going, "Oh my, how 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 do we do this?" Um, let me and Kim, while I know you're you're still here, um, Kim and I, and now particularly with here we go into. I'm going to be surprised if we don't hear even more lockdown restrictions from the governor tomorrow. Um, that in with with the craziness of the of the world, um, Kim was already. They were going to take obviously Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of Thanksgiving off. I've suggested, and for you folks, if you don't know, Kim's mom just passed away. Oh, sorry to hear that. And um, of course, she's out in California. So you, it's you know, again, there's so many people with the the ramifications of COVID. You can't get out there. You can't be with your family. So it's you know, just a little added stress that everybody needs right now. So I'm recommending that they just close all of Thanksgiving week. I don't think that Monday or Tuesday of Thanksgiving, there are going to be a lot of hot property deals that somebody's got to get in and get into the town vault to do a record search or something. Um, and and would look at, as, as we're rolling into, I'd look at the same thing for Christmas week. Let's just, let's just close the close close the offices and i got ron looking at figuring out how with kirsten how we can if we've got some uh again is more i think is more closed down volume is about to descend upon us if there's any of the covid money or a variety of ways that we could that we could um pay her i don't i don't want to say oh we're closing down and then not have her be able to have any salary i keep the office open and let her come in to be paid if we had to do that. So I'm just, I'm, um, what do you, what do you think? I think Thanksgiving is very easy for me. Um, and of course, I guess I'd say technically these, these are, these are Kim decisions, you know, we're just looking for support from the, from the select board that this makes sense. And, and, uh, if anybody has any questions that she's talked to us about it and we think it makes perfect sense. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Yep. Make, make sense to you, Brian? Yes, it's fine with me. Then we got poor Brian who's working 37 hours a day, eight days a week. <laughs> God. What the, I'm really, I told you, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm worried for you, Brian. Ugh. Corrections is, is tough. Um, well, it's, about, like, it's like a fun game of Russian roulette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never. Oh, that's a that's a that's a good way to look at it, Brian. <laughs> I think a lot of people like that when they go grocery shopping, even. 
crying. It's yeah. Um, they, they, yeah, uh, they, they, they try to have a hot and cold zones in the facilities, <laughs> and the, the inmates aren't the ones. The inmates are living there, and they're they're fine. And uh, it's the staff that's bringing it in. Ah, right. Okay. So, so you're you're potentially always in a hot zone. Yeah, yeah, it's like they're finding this spread. It's not being people from out of state coming in to us. It's us leaving and coming back in and not quarantining. Yeah. Hmm, bye. Okay, so so we're sounds like Kim, we're we're okay and and um, we'll work with Ron to see what we can figure out for Kirsten, okay? I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um and then well, and while we've got here at the <laughs> The change to the bi-weekly payroll, um, we sent out to see how folks felt about it. And, and uh, as I, when we first discussed it, said Amy had, had some concerns and looking for time to make the, make the change. And Kim had some concerns. And then I um, we checked with the, with the rest of the employees and everybody was like, oh, my God. Um, Particularly, I th I think Dave, as you had said, and and once you, once you've worked on biweekly, you you know it's it's fine. It's like anything, but a combination of COVID and it's crazy, but also doing this at Christmas time, um, when people are going to be tending to spend more money, it's um you know, and several people pointed out that so many folks. As, as I said, one of the things I said, Kim has done such a good job at getting people to do their property taxes automatically deducted monthly. And I know more and more folks are sort of automatically doing that with, you know, have their bills paid on an automatic thing. And it can take a couple of months to get that shifted over. So, um, so people ask that we n not do this on the time schedule that we're talking about, not that we not ever do it. That um, and I don't know. This this is where Ron and Allie can, you know, um, my head had originally gone to. We just do it on our fiscal year, so we do it July or the beginning of July when you need to do it, or even if we put it off for another entire year. I don't know when you get into counting weeks and things what it is, but I I would recommend that we table this for a while. Folks folks seem to be fine saying if it was. You know, if they had at least six or seven months and you know it's coming, that gives everybody plenty of time to make the changes to their automatic payments, but make their changes into how their cash is flowing, too, which I think we want to be res respectful of folks. So at this time, I would make the motion that we table the biweekly payroll until we'll look at it in June for a fiscal year. Yeah, I'll just talk, and talk with folks and see what works. No, no, no. I, 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 I'd like, I'd like to start yeah. as far as a discussion of that. Um, Get a second from uh, Roland. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. For, yeah, as far as the discussion part of it, um, I think if we actually um, did it in May or something like that, then it would give adequate warning to the people to actually get their finances uh uh, straightened out so that they can if we vote on it in in june then they give them a month yeah no i right. i i hear what everybody's saying i i think there's some miscommunication that went out f with the memo the memo was specifically written to say two things one the town would switch to bi-weekly on the first payroll of january because payroll is a calendar year thing so you can't really okay. use a one fiscal thing but the transition period was offered for people that can't make the switch for whatever reason. Could be anything. Could be tax payment deadlines, bill payment deadlines, uh, prepay, auto pay, all those things that people get tied up with that are tied to a deposit in their checkbook. Um, so the transition period was offered, which was meant to deal with everything that everybody has just said that. If you're going to make a change, you're going to have a transition period for certain people that's appropriate. It's it's a nice thing to do. Some people can do it quicker. Some people can do it slower. You know, it just it it's such a variable thing because it's so personal. So the transition proposal is to do just what you said. 
have the select board say, fine, we'll make the change January 1, but nobody has to see a cash flow change until they're ready, which I, I wouldn't say forever, but if you set a deadline where uh, we're gonna continue to, we're gonna do the biweekly payroll timesheets and we'll pay you your weekly schedule, and Allison and I can figure that out so the pay doesn't change per, by the week. And those folks make their adjustments over six months. Let's say, let's say the transition period ends on July 1st, 2021. Okay. So they have six months plus a month and a half in this year because it's only the 15th of November. So that gives them seven and a half months to look at their pay, their cash flow and make the changes to where they will get one check every two weeks. So, and, and to help people make that change, Alice and I could look at every individual person that wants to have a transition and, and lay out a, a plan for them to show them how it would work. So if somebody says, all right, I can do it, but I can't do it January. I need to do it uh, April 1st. And, and Allison says, fine, we'll have your weekly paychecks just as normal, go through and post on Fridays. And on, on the first week of April, you'll skip that week. The second week of April, you start with your biweekly and that's, that's done. So I think the, flat, the, the lost in translation was the, the proposal for just January it doesn't have to be that way. The, the thing yeah, that okay. has to happen is the, is the books that we keep and report for taxes and everything else has to start in, internally within what Allison and I do on the, the first week of January. The payment okay. to the employees can be switched to whatever time frame they want. And I, I'm only suggesting that you only do six months because I, if, if you do more than six months, it'll never happen. It's like you got to make a call at some point. Uh, and, and yeah, the, I think from the from the memo, Ron, it did look like as though um, it was until the end of January, sort of thing, and that that was, that was the, right. so. That's that, you're right. That's what got lost in the whatever. I, I think so, and and I think I think if the town sees benefits to biweekly, which there are some benefits that we've talked about before, and you give employees seven and a half months to look at their calendar of payments and make the changes from a first week to a second week or work with their spouses to figure out how the, what the best cash flow process is for them. Um, I, I think seven and a half months is a, a really a way reasonable amount of time to make a change like this. It's uh, Kim, does that make sense to you? I still don't agree with that is it the time or the going by there weekly? are others that i there are others that i've spoken with that would not agree with it as well that are not on this call yeah, yeah. What, are, what are the issues kim the issues that i've put forth in the email to everybody it's when i replied to your email I know, I know, I'm trying to ask if you can distill them because I thought you said you were supportive of the change, but you wanted six I'm months. I'm supportive of the change completely because I've been in Allie's shoes. I know what it's like to do the weekly payroll when you can easily cut that job in half by processing it every other week. But I also know what it's, what's gonna be involved for Allie by trying to plan ahead the six months, keeping people weekly and <laughs> weeding them to bi-weekly as they get closer to their whatever, their March or their April or their May or, you know, whatever their deadline is. Instead of just saying in July, we will be going to bi-weekly on January 1st of 2022 and let everybody figure that out on their own rather than having to sit down with the town and say, make this work for me. Well, that's that's still an option. People can say, okay. you know, people can say, I'm gonna switch July 1st and they have seven and a half months from now to figure it out. They don't have to transition the way that, you know, we did the, the half a, we did the four week transition thing as an example, but. It's, it's not, it's anytime a municipality or any entity changes from weekly to bi-weekly, there's gonna be a burden. Uh, and 
this proposed plan that we're coming up with is to take seven and a half months and put that burden, if you will, for this transition on me and Allie to make sure it happens. The employees could take as long as or short as they want. So it's it's not a the mandate. Burden the burden would only be, well, the burden would be on Allie in the respect of if you give, if you give the warning beforehand, instead of give it now and then back into it, if you tell them July 1st, that January 1st, you're going bi-weekly, then all Allie has to do is work with whoever, Nimric or whoever the software provider is, to convert our weekly um, deductions into bi-weekly deductions. If you go now, now you're coming up with schedules of how to do, you know, who to pay what, and for how long, and you know, it's actually making more work for Allie, and you're right, it is more work for you and for Allie, but if you I'm do not, it I'm not the sure right way. And I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's your concern though. I think if, if, the, if Allie and I figured out how to do it, that's not your concern. Your, your only concern is to say, when can I get my personal finances in order to make my personal switch from weekly to bi-weekly? That's, that's not, that so, you should Ron, be thinking my about our concern business. is for anybody who works for the town. My concern as treasurer is for, because I'm signing the check. I'm the one getting the, the messages by messenger, the phone call saying, what's going on? And my response is, I honestly don't know. I got the email the same day you did. I know that's why so you refer to I have to ask some questions. I, you I need to call and being, talk to Susan or talk to Allie or talk to Ron. And some yeah, people aren't comfortable doing that. Right. So your referral to Allie or Ron is all that you need to do. I don't I don't see where your role is to worry about our burden. So Well, I can't let's Hey, see. hey, hey, can, can I can yeah. I chime in here? Yeah. I think this is turning into something else we don't need to be on public. So I think that, Susan, if you would, could you mediate this and uh, get it uh, rectified? Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking, that we that we need to. I mean, I, 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 I like Kim's idea of just saying, okay, we're going to let everybody know that, and it puts it off for a while, but that's okay. That, that uh, yeah, let me let me just talk with everybody and let's let's get to a... I don't, to think, a I don't think we need to debate it. I'm just, if, right. if, if the board is not comfortable for whatever reason, then just defer it and, and we'll, we won't bring it up until the board's ready. Yeah, I think for that right now, we'll defer it, but let's sort of come up with the plan now so it's not one of those little things that's just sitting there and see how, you know, with uh, where, where employees are at. And I think we can, I can, well, they certainly didn't, the they next certainly week or didn't so. understand the option of the seven and a half months, that's for sure. Right, right. I think I think I think we can get everybody to yes, Brian. <laughs> Phew. Okay, if not, we'll I make people listen to village meetings. <laughs> Another one, yeah. Okie dokie. Um and and now annual employee recognition amounts. Kind of. Well hold on. I got a I got, we got a well, motion on the floor here uh you're you're right shall we um table, table. it yeah it was a yeah. table motion. yep yeah okay then do you have to vote i guess we vote uh all in favor of tabling the motion say aye aye aye, aye. aye. okay okay now annual employee recognition i'll get that a little bit there we go. I, was to I nominate Roland Bobin. For what? For recognition. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I, uh. What, what like do we. To, yeah, I'd like to make it that we do the same as we did last year $140 for full time employees and Forty dollars for part-time employees. Second. Okay. Any conversation? 
Who had the second? Sorry, I missed that. Dave I think it was Roger. Roger. Yeah, I, think, I was going to say it was oh, Roger. 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 Okay. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay. Phew. Town orders. <laughs> where's where's my big packet? <laughs> <laughs> where's your virtual packet? Yeah. I don't. I don't. Oh, that was the water. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. So, do we have? Is there anything that we actually need to do with that? Um, I don't I'm think. Not sure. That's okay. Allie. Okay. I guess that's okay. Go ahead. And if you, yeah, if you don't see the town orders, then you'll have to skip it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nope. I'm not seeing anything. Susan, I emailed them around four ish this afternoon. Oh, God. Okay. I can forward them again if you would like. Is that the one I hit print? It's printing out 38 pages, Allie? Probably. It's either that or the budget status report. Um, I know. Wait a minute. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, there's Hutchins. There's two. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get my iPad to do four different things. I'm like going, okay, it's not working too well. Okay, now I got them. Do other people have them? No, I don't. No, I've got mine. I've got mine. Okay. Who said they didn't have it? Was that Dave? No, me, Roger. Oh, Roger, yes. Oh, okay. Susan, I don't know if you want me to go over the large over 500. I mean, there's nothing abnormal besides I was going to say yeah. the, the appropriations. Yeah, why don't why don't you do the do the bigger ones? Okay. Yeah, just the over five hundred. I'm looking. Okay. Ooh. Please find. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, the other, Allie, I, do, I do have it. Okay, so for Roger, um, we're paying out the annual appropriations to all the service agencies. Um, that's a majority of over 500. We are also paying Hutchins for center road ditching, which is coming out of the FEMA fund. Um, we're also paying the quarterly taxes for the education to the school district for 919-34303. And there's another large one for Paul Franken Collins for 813. It looks like for highway department, which is the lawyer. So it's 
nothing that's any different. No. No. Nope. Hey, Allie. Yeah. We we generally we generally pay uh, rural community transport three thousand three fifty. Is that on that uh, people asking for money on the town report? Correct. And, and that also includes uh, the uh, river arts. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So I think anybody have any questions? Nope. Okay. Susan, nope. there's also the two that um, I believe Ed Webster was requesting the fire equipment reserve one that I had emailed you about. I don't know if you wanted to discuss that. Okay. Right, because, yeah, go ahead. Why don't you and Ron explain that? Because I remember we did talk about. So when I talked to Ed last week, he said that last year around this time, when he proposed his budget for this year, that there was going to be hydro testing. And I want to say that's on the air packs. I can't remember. Um, that he requested it be paid out of the fire equipment reserve fund. However, there was no approval of that. It was just mentioned in the minutes. Um, it is only $150 total. So I guess it's kind of up to you guys how you want to handle that, whether you want it to go out of the normal fire operating budget or if you want it to come out of the reserve. What's, what's everybody's, what do you want to do, Dave? It really doesn't make a bit of difference, does it? It was actually, well, excuse me, but it was reserve. actually more than 150 that she's talking about. It was 900 and something, <laughs> I believe. Oh, I thought it was 150. Talk about the reserves. Ed, I've only seen two invoices, one for 50 and one for 100. Yeah, well, I've got two more here because we can only do so many at a time. So those other two, right, wouldn't be included today, so. We'll get those next month? Yes. Uh, you'll get them this week. <laughs> yes, uh, just a little background on this. <laughs> the... Um, Reserve funds are set up by the voters for specific uses controlled by the select board. Typically, they're unanticipated major repairs that normally wouldn't be addressed or, or uh, predicted, so to speak, through the regular operating budget for fire. Um, on this one, it's a, Ed, is it like a five-year type rotation on these or longer that you're needing to do this work? They have to be hydro tested every five years. Yeah. So the, and, when the uh, oh, go ahead. Let's see. We asked for nine hundred twenty-four dollars. So the select board has a choice. Obviously, what when you run across a expense that's not covered by the annual operating budget and you can take the hit, so to speak, on this reserve fund, but because it's set up specifically by the voters to be controlled by the select board, uh, it gives you three different choices. One, fourth one actually is to, is to not use the reserves, but put it under the fire department 30 fund or their regular budget. The other three choices are to sort of do what's happening tonight when Allie gets a request for the use of the reserve fund, she will highlight it as a request for the reserve fund and select board discusses it and either approves it or doesn't approve it as part of the town orders. A second choice is to have a separate warrant, which would be a separate piece of paper basically that says, hey, this is, this is for the reserve fund and here's a separate warrant for it all on its own. So that automatically highlights it that it's a reserve fund, not part of the regular budget. The third option is to have the select board minutes show a vote or a discussion authorizing the reserve fund to be used with an approximate amount. 
and then those minutes would be used to add to the warrant. So one of those three things should happen with reserve funds, and the dollar amount is another thing. So the $150, which is really part of a $900 bill, is what Ed's seeking help with through the reserve since it's not part of the budget. And in future budgets, because it's a regular cyclical expense, the regular budget can be modified to make sure that it does include this have the money expense. and maybe there's a schedule of doing so many a year so you pay a few hundred dollars a year and all the all the bottles or testing are done or on a regular basis so i it, it's a good example of reserve funds in general a refresher if you will that we shouldn't just use reserves as part of the regular warrants we should call those out a little bit make sure that the board has a discussion on it one way or the other through those three or four different ways that you can do it and if nothing works that way then yeah it would be an over expenditure on the town fire department budget and whether you make that up through cost cutting or there was some reserve you know um, revenues that came in or something that happened during the year that paid for it but what ed, ed was seeing is not in the budget got to be done select board indicated that they'd be approving of it but you didn't take a vote on this particular expense so that's why we're talking about it tonight if you had taken a vote like you did for the uh, generators then then it just carries forward till that project is done this one didn't have the prior approval so since we know the rest of the bill is coming Ed, probably what we should do is um and maybe again it's not that difficult to do it as a as a separate um anything that we're looking at taking out of a reserve do it as a as an individual warrant for the whole amount and then we just we'll just uh, again since we know it's all coming talk about it once but then i i would just assume i don't know dave what you want to move to approve taking the money out of the fund to pay for it I remember we did talk about it and said, yeah, this is where the money was going to have to come from just because, you know, it's a. No un, un, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Dave. It, it's something that's got to be done and it's something we got to pay for. So. So probably mm -hmm. that. That's Can I make the motion that we go ahead and take it out of reserve funds? Well, yep, is that okay. right? What did Roger say? that we take it out of the reserve funds. For this yeah. time? The right. next time, make sure you add it into the budget. If he, averages, if he puts it into a budget, they only do it once every... Now, they do the whole... Ed, they do the whole... Uh, all the hoses all at once. No, this was... This was their power. No, they had... Dave, these are the air bottles for our air pack, right. and they all I mean, come due within a, within a few months of each other because we bought them under the grant. So they have to be done every five years under OSHA regulations, or you can't use bottle. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think uh, got a reserve fund. I agree, Rod. Yep. Okay. Here we we got a, so a most. A motion in a second. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And and this this will be for the the rest of the bill that comes in, if you will. Okay. Hey Ryan, I can't hear you. You're muted. Just want, I just wanted to clarify, that now, now that you have a vote, Allie knows that when she sees Ed code something to the reserve, that you're 
approved pre-approved to put it in there she won't have to highlight it for you okay because it's pre-approved for any number of invoices up to the thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars or whatever he was thinking right but it's out of the okay. reserve just for this specific purpose not for the wild parties that ed wants to plan no just for the air bottles for the air packs <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right you don't have authority for wild parties ed without inviting us well okay without inviting us <laughs> okay now are we done Allie? yes thank you okay we, we have an overall order on our vote for the orders the now 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 we will <laughs> okay. now we need motion to approve the order yes it is we're almost done okay got a motion in a second all in, favor, say, all in aye, favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. We got it. <laughs> okay. We're, we're done, Ron. <laughs> oh. Orders are done. Yeah. Okay. The only other thing we have to do is we have to do an official vote on the contract, and the crew's already approved it, right? We have to review the minutes. And it's yep. Roger said. Yep. Yeah. Everybody got the minutes? Yep. 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 Okay. Need need a motion? That's good. We'll be oh. accept them as written. Okay, Just got a second? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now, right, Ron, we just need to approve the contract. Right. The, uh, other other business. We have two quick things. The uh, if anybody hasn't been watching Lamoil Fibernet, they have a decent website to go browse their stuff. They're actually doing some field survey for locating utility poles, which will help lay out where the fiber network can most easily extend to. This is the house to uh, getting to every door kind of concept. The delinquent tax collector attorney and tax sale 2020, uh, I think uh, Kim can speak to this, but I think she wanted uh, some some direction on the current policy of trying to get something done in November, which is now a little late for that, but anyway. Right. We're gonna defer that for this year due to COVID and uh, whether you wanna make a decision on DTC attorney now or later, if you, if you defer the tax sale, you and the you can make a decision on the attorney any, any time, because you're not stressed for a tax sale date. Uh, we have a choice of uh, Angela Ross, if she's still interested in continuing, and uh, David Rue, who's the town attorney for other matters, could do the work. And I think we just deferred that whole thing until the... We got the Bartlett thing, Bartlett right. So Angela did prepare the uh, documents that she promised to uh, prepare for free. So we do, we do have those. We haven't set a closing date yet, but we... Don't really need her for a closing we needed her to prepare the documents so she's finished her commitment to the town i guess is one way to look at it so okay i would i would do the tax sale question first i think kim is that right kim that you wanted some confirmation that there's a tax sale to be had or no tax sale this fall put it off for a oh. I'm at, my problem right now is that I am in my process. So per the policy, there are certain steps that happen May 16th and June and July and August, and then everything goes to the, the tax sale attorney. So there's nothing in our current policy that tells me what to do at this point. Um, so we've got a delinquent tax report 
I don't have it here in front of me. Um, that's not anywhere near as big as it has been in years past, which is crazy because it's COVID and there's been so many people out of work. So we're very fortunate is it is what it is. Um, but I do have people who are delinquent that I don't have a formal letter. I'd have to create it based on the current situation um, that just says, you know, basically you're delinquent, keep on paying or not paying. At some point in time, we're going to get to you. So I, if, if we go to tax sales, I need a tax attorney. If the board decides for many reasons that we're not going to do a tax sale this year, um, we'll wait until what we recycle with our, you know, the end of May of 2021, and we'll start the cycle again then. That's fine. Um, we do have some people who are on payment agreements that, according to the agreement, if they default on the agreement, they immediately go to tax sale, you know, and, and they're aware of that and the initial little line on the agreement that acknowledges that statement. So uh -huh. I, I, in, in theory, if they go, if they default on that agreement, who's going to be our tax sale attorney? I need to be able to turn to somebody. Hey, Kim. Yes. Does tax sale, does, does that mean eviction? <laughs> no. Does that mean eviction? No, it does not. What that means is their property goes to tax sale, but they have one year to redeem their property while they're still living there. Okay. Because with this COVID law, it, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There, there are some variables to all this with the COVID adjustments. Dave, yeah, Dave's right. That does does affect some of the options the select board has. And the delinquent tax collector. Kim, what's your advice? That what would you, what would you advise us to do? You're the one who really knows all uh, the answers. We're we're so out of sync with our policy that I my suggestion is that the select board uh, forego a tax sale for 2020. Um, allow any um, defaulted payment agreements to go to tax sale as soon as a reasonably possible. Um, you know, it would, it would also depend on the situation, you know, depending on the time of year and like Ron said, some COVID things, I'd have to research, you know, what can we do and not do? I think yeah, we can okay. do the tax sale, but when the final redemption comes, I don't know what we could do. I'd, I'd have, you know, the tax, we'd have to rely on the tax attorney for that kind of guidance for that. okay 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 so then i guess it sounds like what we should do is have a motion to forego the 2020 tax sale um and i'd sit with kim knows what she has she can come with a proposal we, we will once again postpone or put it at the top of the list for december ron to make our decision about our lawyer okay and does that take care of it for now, Kim? Yes. Okay. I'll just retool my monthly letters that I send out to people and use those until we cycle to the end of the current tax year, and then we'll just kind of start the process all over again. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yep. Yep. Did you want a motion on that and a vote to? Yep, yep. just want to make sure it works with everybody. Yeah. Did it change yeah. the policy? Okay, so need a motion to. I feel like. Forego. The, uh, yeah, to, to for, you're right, to, to forego the 2020 tax sale. I feel as though the Bartlett tax sale oh, took no. care of us for three or four years. <laughs> So moved. Okay. Second. Need a second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining?
Okay. Delinquent type, we took care of that. Fiber net now? Now, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> we no. Yes, now is for the union. Yeah. yeah, we just need to to vote officially to um to approve the the union contract. The, the only thing that we, we're discussing or different was that nine hundred dollar uh, uh, call in at two hundred and fifty dollars per month. Or two twenty five a month or whatever it is, right? That's the only thing that we're uh, voting on, right? Our, the contract, I understand, but that's the only thing that was outstanding. Yes, yes, that was yes, that was yes, and we agreed that it's two twenty. Is that right? My math, right? Two two twenty five a month for the four months. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So moved. Okay. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I really like being together a lot better than <laughs> than this stuff, but I think we're going to be I think we're going to be zooming for a while. Um, anything else? So, yeah. Should I know you shouldn't run a business on what if, but should we be looking into a plan right now if one of our uh, uh, guys does COVID or does have COVID and and other and and it shuts down the crew, shuts down the crew on a two foot snowstorm. um i i well it's interesting it, it was way back early when um when back in march where we are where right now and the town crews had sort of all talked to each other and said if anybody ended up in that situation everybody had just pitch in and you know and, and help the town that was down but i think that's a good suggestion dave that they they need to have that conversation again uh, may, maybe with our guys and maybe with the other towns. Yeah, yeah, same same thing they did back in March. Right, because I'm, I'm sure they're looking at the same thing because, yeah. you know, it, it could happen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the other, the other thing that goes with that, I sent out a, um, a winter COVID plan document from Cornell University where they had researched uh, winter plowing practices that could limit uh, the risk. So for example, right now, when the crew goes out in the morning at three o'clock, there's sometimes one loader operator because all the trucks are coming out of the garage at the same time and that one person will load all the trucks. After that initial load, the only interaction they have for that whole emergency, which might last five or six hours, is the driver getting out of their truck and going into the loader to load up sand mm -hmm. or salt or whatever. So the suggestion from this, this is just an example, not saying rec, you know, recommended at this point, but we hire somebody to run the loader during the emergency so only one person is in the loader loading all the trucks so the mm -hmm. drivers don't okay. care just to give you an example of thinking ahead to yeah yeah limit the risk uh i'm guessing that if this keeps going we're going to have a higher and higher risk so the more that yeah. we can do to limit risk so anyway something to think about if anybody wants to read that i can forward it to them thank you already did ron Okay, well, that's just, it's it's something to think about which has money tied to it. So if anybody likes something in that idea book, uh, maybe we can implement some low cost ones. Yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing up to the garage, but I think we should implement that to the, uh, if they're in the garage together, they're wearing masks. Yeah, I, I, folks have gone, folks have definitely gone back to that. I. I think um, lots of us in many ways have gotten just a little careless, 
And uh, there's nothing like a good scare to make you go, okay. <laughs> Let's, um, you're just realizing how rapidly and how easily this spreads. Yeah, I, got, uh, I got instructions by the sheriff the other day. If I'm out of the cruiser, mask and gloves all times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we, need a loader, if we need a loader. I know it is a good one. Okay. Um, got anything else? Or are we long meeting, but good. Got a lot of stuff done. Yeah, that's right. We'll come back to you with a winter plan in December when I talk to Mark. Let's okay. see if if anything rises to the top for we should do this starting immediately kind of stuff. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to have a backfall on it, though, in case something did happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the backup plan is all the select board members driving plows. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, you better open the account for mailbox. To the <laughs> Dave, I the don't think that's people, the, the village people complain about their streets now. You put me in a small truck with a plow and I'll give them something to complain about. <laughs> they complaining about their houses. <laughs> hey, I, I with, with town, when do you go into the operation, Ron? I go in for a full hip replacement on November 24th. 24th. <laughs> Maybe, right. So I've been in and out of in and out of doctor appointments like constantly for a month but hopefully i get my second covid test this friday and then they call me monday afternoon to tell me what time to show up on tuesday okay well good well good luck so, to you I don't know what, good luck to you everybody have yeah a good thanks time. i don't know what the recovery will be but i'll be busy i'll be busy recovering for thanksgiving week myself <laughs> yeah and you're up in you. copley right yeah, I'll be at the at the, um, the orthopedics. orthopedics. Yep. 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 We'll spend the night at Copley. Possibly, I, I'm kind of optimistic they'll get me in at six o'clock and get me out by uh, six p.m. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Ron. We'll okay. find out. I'll let, I'll let you know. I'll bring you flowers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, move, okay. move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. So move. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Terrific. Thank you all very much. Everybody be safe. Be careful. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night. Oh, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Bye -bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm.